Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. We back on the glorious in-season tournament day. It's a big day, y'all. I don't know if y'all looking at the standings and everything. This is a big, big day. Some teams are going to get eliminated. Some teams with a win could advance to the to the actual round that matters. I applaud you, man. For keeping up with it like you, that? No, you just you're hype, you're trying to hype it up. Oh, they paying me. You're trying to hype it up. Speaking of that, um, next Tuesday, I'm being in New York to do a shoot with the NBA. Uh, I know that's right. <laughs> so they paying me. Uh, and it's, I actually do enjoy the NC tournament. I want to give a shout out to my boy, Michael, a.k.a. Mikey Groggins. It's his birthday, man. He's Happy a birthday, Mikey. He's a supporter mm, of us. From, um, where do I know him from? You know, I'm, I know y'all know him. All from, of y'all Is he from Pickaside? He's not from Pick a Side, but he watches them too. He's a, he's a Through the Wire fan. Oh. He rocks with us heavy. What's, hmm. what's popping, Mikey? I hope you but enjoy your beat. He does Pick a Side a lot. He's a, new, he's a New Yorker. He's a UConn guy, a Nick guy. He might be a Jets fan or a Giants fan. Sorry to hear that. Yankee, Mets. He's a New Sorry Yorker. So shout out to my boy. We got we got some other ones we're going to hold off on. All right, bet. Because uh, the last few shout outs I've given for birthdays. I haven't got acknowledged. I know my boy, my boy Mikey is going to acknowledge it because he hit me up all the time about certain things. Mm. He'll say some shit like, P, you said he averaged 21. No, actually, he was 29. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mikey be on his shit. They don't be for real. Huh? They ain't real, like KD said. KD got a point. KD got a doing? point. He got a point. Don't, don't talk to me about that. And that's how I feel right now. Don't hit me up about a birthday shout out. If you're not going to be there to see it and then acknowledge it, because mm-hmm. oh, you yeah. break your neck to get one and then you don't break your neck to go, we just pretty it. much just giving you a happy birthday on to a bunch of people who probably don't care. Y'all be telling celebrities happy birthday? No, hell yeah, happy birthday, big bro. <laughs> if I know him, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. tell. I'm gonna tell. You know, big bro had to pull up on me. You know, he four p.m. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday, big bro. <laughs> I'm gonna tell. You, I'm gonna tell you all my all my cousins from RDC happy birthday. <laughs> but that don't count because you know Katie. them. That's what I said. If I know them. <laughs> But if I go, if I'm finna, and you think I'm gonna be on LeBron shit like happy birthday, yeah, King. it's the people that's DMing LeBron happy birthday. <laughs> that's it's coming so, up, and that's so crazy because like he would never see it. Guess how many days till LeBron's birthday? It's on December thirtieth. Thirty nine days until LeBron turns thirty nine years old. I don't know. I randomly looked it up recently, so I just knew. Oh, I, you should have known that since mm. the day he was born. He's a king. <laughs> glazing. This is the glazing episode. Uh, today we got we got one thing that we've learned about every single team. We're about a month into the NBA season, y'all. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, a month into it. Oh, you know what? I do want to give another sh- birthday shout out. I want to give a shout out to the boyfriend. Oh, oh I want to give it to Roland Roseman. Mm-hmm. Um, your girlfriend Serenity typed up a beautiful long message. What a um, nice girlfriend! Making sure that you got this. I would never gonna see this because I was just. I just found out. I don't want to say I just found out. Maybe I forgot. But Instagram has a request box. Yeah. Oh, you no, just no, found no, out no, about no, no, that? No, no, no. I'm sorry. They have a request box, right? Inside of the request box is hidden. Oh, they do have a hidden one. Oh, I, I never, never checked, checked the hidden one. I never one. checked so it before. A lot of messages. I have no idea what y'all talking about. When you go in your DMs, you're going to have primary, you're going to have general, primary, and then you're going to have requests. Hidden requests, yeah. Who are trying to get into your DM. But inside of the hidden, I mean, inside of the request, it's hidden. So it's like, bro, <laughs> how the hell am I ever going to see this? I'm supposed to go into the request and look at the hidden? So it's a lot of messages that I don't get and I don't see. I'm just hoping and praying that fucking when Jay-Z reaches out, because they want to do something with Flex or LeBron tells me he watches the pod that it ain't going into the hidden. Is it different though? Because he would probably, I don't know if you follow him, God but damn. like if you follow them, it'll probably go through different. Okay, it'll right? pop up. Yep. Okay, I, I, I hope so. Damn. But, but what if I don't follow? I don't follow Adam Silver. And what if he like, man, y'all doing y'all thing? I know. I just, Adam Silver definitely. I just checked my hidden request and it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of it's messages. It's a lot in there that I didn't know right? was in here. Yeah. yeah. Messages. So it's like, it used to just come through just straight through the normal request. The hidden request? I don't see hidden. And then just scroll all the no, way to the bottom. Scroll, scroll down, to the bottom. Scroll. scroll to the bottom. No, he has to go to request. He was not Okay, request. we're wasting too much time on this. It's not that important. Uh-huh. Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people learn about the hidden replies, too. Okay. Um, But, yeah, so I said all that to say this this young woman, Serenity, hit me up for her boyfriend, and I, I never seen it. But I saw her comment. She left a comment, Want and a I picture? got the, uh, yeah, or something. It was like, check your DM. 
just now I was checking my DM and I was going to say, you never. That makes a lot of sense because people have told me on like when I was streaming, like check your DM, I DM'd you. And I'm like, I do not see that shit at <laughs> all. And they're like, I'm, I definitely did. Uh, oh, the guy Austin was just talking about who he's done work for us, J-Trip. He's, he's hit me up to schedule an interview with Flex. And Flex was like, what time did he end up saying? I'm like, he ain't never hit me up. I'm like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm actually going to get on his ass because I've been waiting. <laughs> And Flex sent me a screenshot like, no, nah, look, he said he, he said he DMs you. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then I look and I'm like, oh, it's a hidden thing. I would never have seen that. That's crazy to me. So uh, happy birthday, Serenity. Thank you for letting me know, letting us know that Roland is a big fan. Anybody that's big enough fan where their girlfriend is going to write a message this long. Um, Put a ring on that He watches. He watches heavily. It's one thing to watch, but when your girl know that you watch, that means mm-hmm. you watching. He that means he telling her, ass, "Hold on, <laughs> hold on." She like BTW just dropped. Yeah, she like B. <laughs> Let's go. Hold on. I gotta see. I gotta see. I gotta see what they talk. No more like. ninety day fiance. It's through the wire time. You know what I'm saying? Damn, that's what you and Angie be watching. She be watching it. Yeah. Nah. I like. The, nah, I be nah. like. I be like fake watching. Like I be fake invested. Like in certain stories, but I'm not. I'm not really invested in ninety mm-hmm. day. The only thing I remember from ninety day fiance. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> dude I remember. And he was so creepy too, yeah. bro. He's he so creepy. Yeah, he, he creepy. And Why he creepy? Because the way he. I don't remember exactly what I he does. You but say the way he looks. No, no. I mean. That doesn't add like that doesn't take away from the fact because he could be a nice guy, but the fact that he, he is kind of creepy is like I don't like this guy like that. It's kind of it's funny with him because he was such a strange looking dude, but he cheated. Yes, and bro. And yes. I was just like, how he had a decent looking girl too. Yeah, I know. I was like, how did he cheat? All right, can we get to basketball? <laughs> right, was this I got, girl the, like the shit. Filipino girl? Uh, it might have been. Huh. Uh, I got to drop the mic. This one is coming uh, from a Reddit guy. His name is Mountain Employee. 2862, but he had an interesting question. He said, Are passing big man led offices the future of the NBA? We see like Nicole Jokic, Sabonis, even Bam at a bio. A lot of teams have success with those guys that can kind of make plays. For them. Is, is, is there a demand for more skill at that big man position too? I think that we we've definitely grown away from like my center is really just here to block shots and get offensive rebounds. I mean, we have a few of those guys in the association. Shout out to Mitchell Robinson. He's really good at it. But for the most part, for a high-level offense, mm-hmm. to have five skilled players on the court or as many skilled players as possible makes a ton of sense. And w- the guys that you mentioned, whether it be Bam, whether it be Shingoon, or now we see Joel Embiid play making a lot mm-hmm. more, um, those teams tend to be better offensively because you just have more people that are threats with the ball in their hands. I agree. I think um, I don't think it's the future of the NBA. I think the future of the NBA is having – as much skill as possible, regardless of your, you know what I'm saying? Being able to do everything good on a basketball court. But I think if you look at every era of basketball, we've had passing bigs. This ain't nothing that's like, this ain't a phenomenon. You know, mm-hmm. you've seen Vladi Divac be a good passer. Pau Gasol was a good passer. Tim Duncan, Chris Webber. Um, Mark Gasol. Mark Gasol. Like, we can go, and we could even go to the 90s where there was bigs that could pass. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sabonis, the, the the big Sabonis. Beast. Yeah, he, he could pass. So, like, um, I don't think it's the future necessarily more than just the future being of as many skilled players. You know what I'm saying? So I agree with KB. If you can have five guys who are skilled in every facet on a basketball court, you're going to be a good team. Guys who can pass, shoot, dribble, and defend. Um, I think the, fu- the future of the league is trying to have these Vic Chet <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. who can uh, – do that type of shit. Like real real unicorns who can, you know, I think that's the future. Those are just so far and in between, though. Like, it's going to be hard to find another seven foot I don't five think so. I don't Victor think so. Victor Wimanyama type player. Like, I feel like once you know them once they're 16. Well, if you say seven foot. Yeah, I was going to say, I seen somebody <laughs> was like seven, six yesterday. Yeah. If you're seeing seven foot five legitimately, I mean, yeah. That, but oh, I'm just talking about like, the mode of a seven foot guy who is going to be able to comfortably play on the perimeter, shoot threes, block shots, and rebound. Like, yeah, yeah. I see. Not, we used to, like, stretch it and, like, try to force unicorns. But, like, I'm talking about even um, a day Mara from um, UCLA. He's, like, 7'4", seven, 7'3". Seven, uh, Is three. he playing? Yeah, he's, he ain't played much the first game, but he's playing now. He's he's in his draft class. This is the nut. That would be, like, Chet, Vic, now him. And I'm not saying he's going to be at that level. But, shit, e- even if you're a poor man version of Vic – 
Who is not taking that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. A seven three seven four guy who can get you two three blocks and shoot thirty seven percent from three. And I, pass. I do think it's interesting that a lot of those like playmaking bigs that we're seeing be successful. It's hard to scout those dudes. A lot of those dudes went a lot later than what like their production shows. Um, and it's probably because where they previously played, whether it be overseas or whether it be in college, they just haven't, they weren't given the tools to show that like I am the, a playmaking big or I can be the center of an offense because usually overseas or in college ball, it's more team oriented than like play through this singular player. But yeah, from Shingun being pretty late for what people believed, or of course, incredible Jokic, passer. you know, like too. these being guys go, go late. Taco Bell commercial. Yeah, and that's maybe not happening no more because of the, the NBA is trying to make it a two day thing, which is, yeah, I mean, idea. Having a center neck of just unlocks so it's much to your offense. An idea. Mm-hmm. I With think the dribble handoffs and everything like yeah. that. I just think having a two-day draft is just not a good idea. I don't think so either. I don't think it's going to be successful. I think it's only going to be good for like the top 2% of NBA fans. Yeah. Like, Why would a casual NBA fan care that much about the 42nd overall pick when historically that guy doesn't turn into much? Yeah. It's not like the NFL draft where you get the fourth round pick and that fourth round pick or sixth round pick can be the greatest of all time. You know, it's like you know what I'm saying? It's also the NFL has that many rounds. Exactly. We have two rounds. Two rounds. Two rounds. I understand it from the perspective of like this kid grinded his ass off. There's no way he should be drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. Like from the the standpoint of the prospect coming in, that he deserves his flowers yeah. and not during an advertisement. But from a consumer standpoint, it is it's just gonna be that the, second the ratings gonna are gonna drop dead. off like yeah. crazy between that, day one that, and day two. Some things are just the way that the things are. I don't think nobody And it's already too fucking long. We do them live streams, we like, bro, yeah. the lottery took two and a half hours. Just for the lottery. Sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's like what's going on? Nobody is purposely nobody purposely, I think, wanted uh Jokic to be drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. It's just the way that it, it happened. It's just a great story. But it's too. A, it's also a part of it. And yeah, look at the story. Look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like he said he was sleeping. He didn't. Even, he wasn't even watching the draft. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, he doesn't seem like the type to watch the draft. Yeah, just put my name. He in was it. probably he was probably with his horses, with the, sleeping with the horses. With oh the horses. well, no, you didn't say he was sleeping. <laughs> he was probably people tired. People he was probably tired things. from having being with his horses all day. <laughs> what do you think he does with his horses? Race. That's tiring. He's not. He's not a jockey. He's seven foot. I was gonna seven. say that. T- that horse is getting tired as hell with him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, he cannot ride Jokic on a horse. He ride on a. Little he's bucket. on. He's on a carriage behind two horses. Like that's how massive of a person he is. Um, all right, let's get into the, the one thing we've learned about every single team. Mike, give me your first team. The first thing you learned. Oh, oh man. Uh, I'm gonna get this team out the way. I'm gonna go with the Wizards. Uh, I learned that they're probably the most like unserious team. Um, Kuzma is probably like the I guess uh, I would say their best player is defense. Oh, they just don't play any like they're a bad team, you know, straight out defensively. They're not really there. They don't contest any shots. And I think that the hard part for them now is that they kind of like bought in on the Jordan Poole thing. It hasn't really turned out the way that they would like ideally. So it seems like they're going to be really bad again this year. And I don't know if they trade Kuzma. I don't even know if they can get t- get up to 10 games, you know, in terms of like wins. They're also a team that just doesn't put in effort. No, like, they they're not a high IQ team either. I mean, with Jordan, the Jordan Poole, the Jordan moment Poole yesterday. moment where he yes. let they were down ten and he let just time run off the clock because he was rolling the ball up the floor. Floor like that kind of sums up, you know, like that, what's going on with the Wizards. If you told me that and I didn't see it, I would not believe that that happened. For him to be an NBA player, former NBA cha- like champion NBA player, <laughs> that has had seasons where he's been like really solid. For him to be down that much and walk the dog as if he stopped the clock is crazy. I think it's also hilarious. Because, honestly, I was thinking this the other day, too. Especially when they had the matchups prime time, too. It's got to be a wonderful feeling to see, like, your face. Like, my face is attached to the Lakers. Like, when the Lakers pop up, it says, you know, whatever, the star out, the star look. The Wizards, they've been changing it. I seen you post Bilal Kalabali. I seen you game, post Gafford. I'm going to po- post every game. Every game that I watch of theirs. Jordan Poole had a good game, so they're probably going to post Jordan Poole. No, it's, it re- it's dependent on the matchup, though. Yeah. So, okay, let's see what their next game, who their next game because is against. Because theoretically, it should always be Kyle Kuzma. Yeah. yeah. Uh, their next game is against the Hornets. So they will probably be, do LaMelo. Tyus Jones and LaMelo. No, Jordan Poole and LaMelo. They're going to do the guard matchup. And even that, and, that might be worse. And it'd be funny because it just looks so bad. Yeah. Cause like they're going to the the other team star numbers just it's like Luka Doncic, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Gafford and Giannis. Giannis had forty two on eighty five percent shooting. Uh, have y'all read? Did y'all hear the story about the John Wall thing? 
no. the Washington Wizards. So the Washington Wizards owns their network, their like media network. And obviously that's not good. Because because of that, the people that are talent can't necessarily say what they really believe about the way the team is ran. Like propaganda. Because it, it's, exactly. It's like the owner of the organization owns the radio station. It owns the media and everything. So they pretty so, much have to talk good about everything. 100%. Yeah. And then they told them momentum is what they're called. When John Wall come back, because John Wall's on the Clippers, when he come back, he don't get no special treatment, no video, no none of this and none of that. And I just thought that it's so shitty. And, like, the entire article um, is well worth the the, uh, the read. It's pretty long, but it goes through, like, all of the different things that they've done that's just, I don't know, unethical as mm-hmm. being a company that owns the, everything. Um, it would be just like if the NBA owned TNT and ESPN. Like, yeah, they can't talk about the fight with Draymond Green because that looks bad for the association. I mean, <laughs> like it's just bad work altogether. And John Wall being one of the greatest in their history, one of the few people to help the team win a playoff series, he deserved um, he yeah. deserved the moment, even though it didn't end the way you wanted it to. He deserved a I was video. Not a fan of the Wizards, but I would watch the Wizards because of John Wall and Bradley Beal. The last time they were the watching, company. Yeah. so I'm guessing Bradley Beal won't be in the video. Who knows? The yeah, one Bradley Beal got to fucking play. Uh, Blah. That, Hey boy, he shouldn't have ball better than I thought. He's yes. special. I told. Remember that defense is, first. I special. do love the defense on him. Yeah, I need a signed jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I called you special, and you start hooping. <laughs> but yeah, you did a good job talking about the Wizards for that long. Every team will not get that much time. I'm actually surprised the Wizards got that much time at the top of the show. <laughs> uh, okay, my first team is the Detroit Pistons. I promise you, it's not going to be as long as the Wizards. Um, yesterday they played a game against the uh, the Denver Nuggets, who are missing Jamal Murray. Uh, Mike Malone got ejected early in this game. Uh, Nikola Vucevic. <laughs> Nikola Vucevic. I wish he was over there and we had the other one. N- Nikola Jokic got ejected in this game. And they still proceeded to lose. Monty Williams to use any of his timeouts when the opposing team was on the run. And now, uh, we mentioned last episode, they were in a 10-game losing streak. It's more than that. 12 now. Um, which is, again, ridiculous. Um, I've, I'm seeing a lot of Pistons fans calling for Troy Weaver finally. Uh, it, it's such a weird thing because I believe that, like, you look at Jalen Durham. K. Cunningham, Asar Thompson, they've drafted relatively well. They got the missing yeah. like Kelly and Hayes or whatever, but they haven't drafted for like it's too it's too early to say draft for fit. Obviously, yeah. but none of those pieces as of right now really fit cohesively. And I know that Jalen Duran has missed a lot of time. Actually, I saw a stat that their real starting lineup has played a total of five minutes together on the season. Oh wow! So it's like you know maybe once Jalen Duran comes back and and so on and so forth, um, things will look better. But it's he was just having a, such a good year. It's such a hard watch, yeah. you know. Kay Cunningham, even after the last loss, not this one, was saying that like it's it's hard to say that everything is going to be good because we're bad. <laughs> and after their start of the season, I think they were two and one. I want to say they beat the Bulls, which is something. Um, it's been all downhill, and I don't know how you fix it because this is year five of a rebuild, and they have no real progression. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're five. They have not won, been over five hundred since two thousand sixteen, and. Before that, it was be- 2008. So since Barack Obama was in office, they have one winning season. Like th- this is like the first term of Barack Obama. <laughs> yes, we can. On my space, my president is black. That's how long it's been. <laughs> and that was a team that got knocked out by Brian and Kyrie, right? Uh, I don't know. Reggie Jackson, KCP, Marcus Morris, Drummond, and who was the power forward on that fucking team? Was it Greg Monroe? Josh Smith. Oh. May have been Josh. It's Smith. been a long time. Yeah, may have been Josh. Smith. Luckily, the the Lions won a game against the Bears this week, which was yeah. I I wanted to like like the Pistons because I really liked the Sar Thompson playing and everything. I wanted everything like to click. Pistons. Huh? You did like the Pistons. Uh, you can still like them if they're I, bad. I like them, but I don't really like enjoy tuning you in thought as they much. Gonna be better than what they are, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, it's really. I feel like it's uh, it's the offense kind of. You know, I think that a lot of times that they were in games or like they were close is when they have like Cade going off or somebody's really going off. Like that first night against Or Alec Miami. Burks is hitting some miracle shots. But a lot of times I look into the game and they be down damn near double digits. You know, and they're a really young team. And I think that like they have the right coach for Monty Williams because um, he just seems like he knows what he has. You know, right. He ha- He's not going in there expecting wins. He obviously wants his win, and he, but he knows that it's like a process. After every game, he talks about like, just like getting better, it's a step every day. It's a step every game. I've not seen steps. I was gonna say. Yeah, I haven't. Seen yeah, I was gonna say. It's easier said know? than done. Uh, do, do we know what he got? I think so. 
Because, I mean, the only thing he really preaches. This team should not be on a 12-game losing streak. I'm not saying this they, team they should have playoff, but they I thought they were past losing 12 games If in there a was row. any game, mm-hmm. it was that one. And, and luckily, yeah. in the next couple of days, they have the they have the Wizards coming to town. Ooh, what a game. If they lose yeah. that what game. What a game. They lose that Sometimes game. Sometimes mid-offs are actually very intense. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> For real. Who's going to be the star match up there? It's going to be Kate. Oh, and Jordan Poole probably. Never mind. They, they, they can't afford to lose that game. Imagine. And, and you know what's tricky about them? They signed him to a nice luxury. Yeah, they have contract. no choice but to. So Monty Williams is. He's there. Get comfortable. <laughs> it's um, tough, man. That's too much time on them. I got the Hornets. Yep. I don't really have much to say about the Hornets. They play with really good pace. Um, they rebound the ball really well, especially on the offensive glass, but they can't defend the three ball and they can't make threes. Um, and only the Pacers and Wizards give them more points. This is, a, this is a team that gives up points. Last night they had an impressive win. That's one thing I will say. They have these tricky games mm-hmm. where, like last night, they'll beat the Celtics. The Celtics. Um, and even, even not winning – but, like, they'll play some really good teams that I think going into that game, like, I ain't got to watch that. They're going to they gonna run them out of the, they gonna run them out of the gym. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, they'll, they'll step up their game and, and play hard or, or sometimes pull it out. So I'll be real confused. They don't have Terry Rozier right now. Um, I do like what I'm getting from Brandon Miller after this team was crucified for drafting him. Um, he, looks, he looks solid. Him and LaMelo the other night. Was that earlier this week or was that? No, this is a new week. That's, that was last week. Him and LaMelo – was killing. They against, had a game where they well, who was that against? Against the Knicks. They, I think that was against the Knicks. Where they, he had thirty and Le, uh, oh no 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 oh that was I think that was against the Knicks. They and Brandon both, Miller had like twenty nine. I'm like that's your future right yeah. there. Um, that was friends given. Yes, yes, that was friends given. So yeah, I, I like some of the things I see. Lamelo's a stud, man. And this is yeah. what I mean about like the Pistons. This Hornets team, we're not looking at them to make the playoffs, but they're not on a. F- 15 game losing streak. Yeah, well, I think as long yeah, as you no have no team should be on no 10 plus game losing streak, bro. When you have Lamelo Ball sure. on the court, maybe the it wizards. just seems like you maybe got a the, chance. Maybe to win. the Wizards. <laughs> maybe the Wizards. But damn. Even the, the Pistons, Wizards played a solid game yesterday. The Pistons. I said I the thought, Bucks don't defend. Huh? Yeah. Bucks don't really defend. We'll nothing. get to the Bucks. <laughs> trust. Trust. Um, Lamelo's an absolute stud. Mm-hmm. Um, I just still can't believe the conversations that were around him before the season started. It made me re- it made me really question whether or not like I understand the Hornets are the Hornets, and it's not like we tuning into the Hornets on a nightly basis. But some of the conversations around him was like, bro, are you f- are you watching them play with him versus without him? Mm-hmm. And yesterday's a prime example of that exactly. Dude's a stud. He's uh, the last two weeks he's been killing. He's been absolutely killing. He, he yeah, said he that, definitely uh, got off to a slow start, but then he like. Ramped it up, like, and it came out. I don't know. That's the thing, and that's the thing in NBA media talk. It's like there's this itch to to talk down, develop. No, just kind of like develop something. Whereas, like, look, I'm. I can tell y'all now, he ain't as good as this. He's not as good as advertised, or he's extremely underrated. There's this rush to be able to find something that everybody else ain't seeing. Everybody wants to be first, and because of that, you have Mm -hmm. shit like this. And it's just. It was such a small, small sample size when he was struggling too, and he talked about like he wasn't he wasn't fully healthy. You could tell yeah. he was not. He, healthy. He's like, man, I'm finally getting my my legs underneath me, and I'm feeling good out there. And no wonder why it's like I'm producing at a higher level. What do you, you know, think about the complaint that he gave to the NBA, his team about the tattoo? The tattoo. The tattoo. Do you I'm, think they're gonna relinquish the no the because they petty? But I, I, I don't know. I always had mixed feelings about that when certain guys got to cover up certain tattoos. Um, me personally. It would be a privilege and honor to play in the NBA for sure. But I, I don't want to be a part of anything that's telling me I got to cover up something that's on my body, personally. The NBA don't. So you're saying your body, your choice? Huh? Your body, your choice? Obviously. Yeah. But to on, a, on some real shit, don't ever tell me I have to cover up a tattoo. It's yeah. not even like he's got a Apple logo. It's his brand. It's his yeah, brand. I was yeah, gonna say brand. that's what was so. It just makes about. it shady because it's like all the NBA does is promote their brands or like promote their sponsors and everything like that because they're trying to get that bread. My thing though, it don't hurt them. I hate when establishments and, and corporations or companies. I don't mind rules. I don't mind it at all. You know what I'm saying? If he, was, I do. If he was trying to put. Uh, La France on the Hornets jersey, like I'm like just, Mr. Beast. No, I'm putting my logo <laughs> yeah. here. Then, okay, okay, yeah, Lamelo, you tripping? But him having his tattoo, I fuck with Lamelo. I seen the tattoo. 
I didn't go buy none of this. I didn't go buy <laughs> But you know, this is good PR though because I didn't recognize what the you tattoo know, was. It would so also been, look it up. I so. feel like it's because it's on that the, his neck and it's kind of like in a spot where it's not totally covered up. Like if it was just on his arm, they probably wouldn't have said shit no, to him. No, because they may look, they may lie, so cover up his shit. Mm-hmm. What they was made, that on his leg? It's like individual brands like say that they don't. They may go, you know what blew my mind? <laughs> what? <laughs> they did they make more sign or time no. cover up the Jordan? I don't believe so. Mm, I don't, mm. I'll Google it, but I do not believe that they did. But I remember when they was trying to wear the Supreme sleeves. Yep. Couldn't yep. wear those. Um, J.R. Smith. What tattoo did J.R. Smith have that they made him cover up? It was Supreme. Oh, he did. He did. Okay. There we that go. blew my mind because Jordan is a fucking part of that. But He's, no, 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 no. The Reebok made him do it, not the NBA, oh, okay. because he was signed to okay. Reebok. And th- that makes sense to me. You're signed to another shoe brand. Why the hell are we letting you? Yeah. Why did y'all sign me? I had this on here when y'all signed. Why did y'all sign me? I'm Marcin Gortat. <laughs> what did we? Oh, because wasn't John Wall probably with them at that time? True, he was. He's like, yeah. But still, I had it. this tattoo. It's like Mason Plumley having a Jordan deal. When I came into the when I kicked Cody Zeller, when I came <laughs> yeah. into the league, I had this on me. Yeah. So that's just that's just come with it. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't know. To me, I just. Again, I am against police and shit that don't matter. If I came here and was like, Austin, can't have that bottle of water. <laughs> it's just like, why? Bro, why? LaMelo's brand is so much a LaMelo brand. LaMelo, yeah, the like, brand. Yeah. <laughs> this brand fit him perfectly. Yeah. Is it a clothing brand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not terrible. It's relatively good. D-Mail's pulling up in the next pod. That would be some, decent. That would be funny. LaMelo will come on a pod. <laughs> Well, who's your first uh, team, Derek? So I, I had the Blazers. Um, pretty much my statement is Steen doesn't really do anything good. <laughs> he said my, my thesis statement. statement. <laughs> but closing statement. Um, I don't know how to say his name. Tuma, Tumani Kamara. Um, he I, has, we just call him too many cameras. Hold up, hold up. What? So you're not a Blazers fan? Why you say that? Because if you were a Blazers fan, you would watch Blazer games to eventually, at this point of the season, know how to pronounce that name. No, I've watched him play. I just still, I'm, I'm fucking up on how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they have a couple people on their team. I'm like, who? The, where did you come from? I say yeah. Tumani Kamara. Tumani Kamara. Somebody okay. may say Kamara. Okay. Like Duop Reef. Yes, I saw him. Listen, y'all. I, I love this basketball shit. It go through this. It's all in my veins, Mike. I can't get enough of it. I, sometimes I don't go to bed at a decent time because I finally get in bed and I'm thinking like, hmm, let me see what this would look like if Jeremy Grant. How could Jeremy Garrett get traded to the Hawks? <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Bro, he's averaging a good six points per I game. I seen him getting the game and was killer one night. He was shooting threes and shit. Oh, okay. He was shooting them because he's shooting 22%. <laughs> the motherfuckers <laughs> is not going in. That, hey, go to his game log. I bet he had one where he was, it would look like he making up. It's just. Uh, he has a, he does have a 16 scope. point game. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, and I watch college basketball, high school, but what college he went to? That's how you can stun me. Ooh, uh, I think y'all could get, he, he's going, he went to the same college as somebody else on the team. He went to the same college as somebody else on the team. He went to the same, Washington. Nope. He went to the same college. If you can remember, Syracuse. remember last episode, we mentioned a player that also went to this college. Does that help at all? <laughs> No, but we not only did we mention it, it was a prominent part. It was it was Arizona. like it was not Arizona, um, UConn. No, uh, oh, so let's say UConn was it geographically? It's in the south. If that helps, a big school. It's produced a couple Missouri. first overall picks. Houston. It's produced a couple first overall picks, and it's oh, history. Okay. You know how we can do this? What's let's up? start a shouting shit out. <laughs> UConn, Houston. We can just think about the roster, and I can tell you what guys went. So you're the Blazers fan. Jeremy Grant. He went to Syracuse. Oh, this is about to be fun. Let's uh, see if you can name the Blazers Aiden. roster. Arizona. Have they produced the first couple? I just I just said that. He said they're not. Oh, um, <laughs> Anthony Simons. IMG, no college. School didn't go to college. Um, uh, Matisse Thibel. He went to LSU, Skylar Mays. He went to LSU. He I know, I know Skylar Mays. Better than I, I was trying to see if he was going to get to Skylar Mays. <laughs> he was not. Would you, would he you started got yesterday, yeah. He's been hooping for, yeah. for their standards. Yes. His standards. Upgraded his contract. Um, He also, one of those guys that don't turn the ball over. That's what you, you want. Those. Is that all Blazers? 
Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I don't my, know what the hell you said. What I don't know, know what you said. Either. I was about to say, but to my Camaro. <laughs> Too many cameras. Has shown signs of being a very good basketball player. You, you see, they say he's Scotty Pippen. Is his name in front of you? I literally typed it out. Is I think his first name is exactly how you sound out. Tumani. Tumani Camara. Okay. Tumani Camara. There we go. Kamar. Oh, Camara. Yeah, maybe it's Camara and Kamara. How do you uh, say Alvin's name? Alvin? Alvin Camara. Yeah. I say I. I hear both ways. Well, I do too. I yeah, do I hear too. both I ways. I, I do. I swear. I, I don't do know. Too. I don't know. I swear. I do too, Mike. That's Tumani Kumara is, Kumara is phonetically pronunciation. Mara. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can move on. Uh, I also had the Clippers. The Clippers have been. What, what are they on a two-game streak now? Yes, so they're they starting to pick it back up. Uh, it looks like they're gaining just a little bit of chemistry. You know, they started off on a bad streak once they had got James I Harden. Like him. Um, I, from like what I've seen. This team has they have something there, right? Especially with all the stars that you have. It's just I think they had some unfortunate losses. And it just also comes down to like their how should I say it? Like their personnel kind of leaves them hanging in like a couple categories. Like, first of all, they're kind of turnovers like pr- turnovers could be a problem for them. Right. They already have Russell and James Harden who like historically turn the ball over. And then on top of that, you could just naturally throughout the game, which kind of like that gets you out of games. You could lose bad games like that to bad teams. And on the other side, the rebounding part, which I like the fact that they just brought in Daniel Tice too, to kind of help that out. But it's just like once they get the rotations down and Ty Lue talked about like how he likes Paul George running with the second unit more and how he can get him going. It's just figuring out how to get these guys going and utilizing them like at their at their highest and, like, as it keeps going, too, I, I, I like Ty Lue more and more as a coach. You know, I think they're, like, like I said, I, who was I just talking about? I'm glad about? to hear you say that because somebody up here it was does, saying it's, he's like, overrated coach. And ever. it's not just this year, but, like, over the years, obviously, like, Kawhi, Paul George be missing time, and he always kind of, like, figures out with what he's got. And even a situation where, like, when they didn't have Daniel Tyson to rebound, he's like, man, I got to figure this out. Like, I got to go back and film, see what we're doing wrong. I got to go back and not just see what the players are doing wrong, but what are my rotations I'm doing wrong. And so, like, he's always one of those dudes that, like, tries to go above, not above and beyond, but it's like, he going to take that next step. I remember they were down 30 or whatever, down 20 or 30, and they were asking him, like, why didn't you have a big man? And he's like, we had to try something. You know, we're down 30. We got to try to give ourselves a chance instead of, like, just letting it happen. So I think they have a good coach. They have a lot of good players. It just comes down to, like, can you execute and stay healthy now? Yeah, in that game against the Rockets, it was real close. They, they went down to the wire. Um, mm-hmm. James Harden hit the four-point play at the end. James Harden played like 40 minutes that game. I was very surprised to see him be a guy that, like, he was kind of struggling to fit in rotation. Then Ty Lue comes out, and he plays them 40 minutes. So, like, that's something that maybe James – I didn't know James Harden could still do at this point. In school. It's also nice to see that, like, they have the streak now with Russell coming off the bench and him taking that that initiative, which, I mean, it's two years in a row now. Is like Russell coming off that bench and providing that spark of energy. is like that's been the betterment for teams. I think they also have a tough stretch coming up, if I'm not mistaken. Like they have a lot of really tough games. Um, I mean, they play the Spurs again, but then they play the Pelicans, they play the Mavericks, they play the Nuggets, they play the Kings, they play the Warriors twice. So they have a very tough stretch coming up. All teams that they can beat. Yeah. I have uh, not got the chance to really tune into their last two games. Um, the one yesterday was kind of a blowout. It was a it's blowout, Spurs. yeah. Um, all right, my next team is going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves, the number one seed in the Western Conference, ladies Clap and gentlemen. They're still the number one defense when you account for getting rid of garbage time and yada, 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 still doing their thing. The vibes are at an all-time high. I would say the vibes are the highest the Minnesota Timberwolves have ever had vibes in the, the history of their time. organization. No. I'm sorry, I cut you Win, no. win. The Kevin Garnett era. Kevin <laughs> Garnett was the MVP. That team was <laughs> The really second good. highest has ever had the vibes <laughs> in the history of your organization. I smiled yesterday because for the first time in a long time, I was sitting in Discord and I heard KB say something like positive about Cat. Usually when he says something about Cat, it's like, that's a bad turnover by Cat. That's Bro, a bad shot. He's like, man, Cat play making his ass off. He the back- last three games, speci- I know the last five, he's been really good offensively, but the last three games specifically, there's the game against the Pelicans, also on Friendsgiving. I had to re- go back and rewatch it because it was a close one. They were down by 10 going into the fourth quarter. They came all the way back. We saw mm-hmm. Carnton's out there and went whatever, whatever. They started off that fourth quarter, the Pelicans did, in a zone. Boom. Who's running that middle? It's Carl Anthony Towns. And Carl Anthony Towns, historically, is bad at decision-making. So they had him at the middle. I'm like, oh, this is not about to go well. 
He he pump faked, bro. Valanciunas up. You thought that he was gonna throw a lob, so the man that was on the wing decided to come over to try to help the lob, and he dished it off to Mike Conley in the corner. Mike Conley for three. I love those passes. Cause it's like it's that when you be looking like me and pro am when I'm in the middle. It, it's one step. It's like <laughs> the one step on. ahead <laughs> passes, and you see Jokic make these passes all the time when it's like reading the guy that's supposed to be help, and you kind of just eliminate like you're taking that away as he's going to help the dude who you think is he's going to pass it to. But that ain't it, Mike. And eventually, he got his rest. He comes back into the game. They're down by four with four minutes to go. Instead of him playing the middle, he's playing the top as if he's the point guard. The ball gets to the middle. The, the, the defense collapsed. They kick it back up to Carthony house. He got away with a three. He didn't take the three, y'all. He passed it one more to the best player on the team. Anthony Edwards hit the three, and now it's down by one. I'm like, bro, this man is on a whole nother level playmaking-wise. Of course, we still get the iffy turnovers, him dribbling off his big-ass feet here and there. Be big as hell. <laughs> but for the most part, <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns is starting to figure out the time with Rudy Gobert, and I think that's the thing that matters the most. Yeah. Um, last year, they only played 500 minutes together. So far this year, it's almost up to 300. So we're just looking at the first month of the season. They've almost matched the amount of minutes, and the continuity is going well. He's re- recognized a win to throw the lob, mm. when to take it himself. He's balancing things, and Anthony Edwards is still playing his best ball. Yesterday, um, Jaden McDaniel sprained his ankle. It was ugly. I hope it's not something that's going to hold him out for more than a game or two. But the vibes are high. They're playing great ball. Their offense is still a work in progress, but because the defense is so dominant, they're putting it together. I would love to see them. It's just a schedule-based play. Gets another one of the top teams in the league. Because yeah. right now, they they killing the teams that, you know. They're supposed yeah. to. Not even that they're supposed to, but let's say the teams that are – we deem to be in the same realm preseason okay. wise, yeah. but I need to see them go against like a the Nuggets. Y- y- some team alone knows yeah, those yeah, Nuggets. They beat the Celtics too. But mm-hmm. I need another one of those because in those <laughs> games where they were playing against the top teams, Someone their offense was bad. Oh. The defense is where they hung their hat, which is fine. But you want to see a little bit of a balance out of the offense against the top teams. Yeah. So, uh, r- really good times in Minnesota right now. Well, since I let all of y'all pick the teams and y'all left me with Dookie. I, I did pick the cool teams. Uh, That's funny because I had said Sixers and then KB just made a oh, list. Oh, I took the Sixers? <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'll make a new list. Oh, my fault. You good. I don't care. You did say Sixers. I do have one. <laughs> we can y'all, share that one. Y'all left me one team to talk about. Um, the Bucks. Keep it a buck. Uh, we get the Bucks. Bucks turned their turn they season around. You know what I'm saying? They still not on shit defensively. 22nd mm-hmm. defensively. Fourth offensively. Um, they get into the free throw line a lot more. Than last year, I guess that was that's what happened when you got two stars. Now um, they don't hit the offensive glass as, as much as I would like them uh, to get some second chance buckets. They lead at home and they give up twelve offensive rebounds a game. Defense just ain't there. Those are the notes that I made. They like if you look at the roster, to Malik you literally can like look at them and be like, "There's one guy. There's not one guy who I trust to stay in front of somebody like consistently." Yeah. You know, and it's just like the backcourt with Dame and Malik Beasley is already like, yeah. And then Chris Middleton, yeah, I'm not really trusting. It's just like they, you can go through it, and it's like, is there any way possible? They need so they need earth. a wing. No, oh. they can't get out of school, so okay. Yeah, that, that would be like the most ideal. <laughs> it's funny, but it's yeah, they they can't buy stops when they need it, so they need that that their offense to always be there, which is good because you have Giannis and Dame. But man, if Hey, if you got a parlay and you need you need somebody with points, and there's some team is playing the Bucks, I would take them. Yeah, especially even like campaign. Campaign is just free cheese, bro. <laughs> I didn't even notice how bad of a defender he was until like I start. The Phoenix Suns did a good job of hiding it, but man, on the Bucks, is it so prominent? And just like it's just there. you know what's funny? It's probably gonna be a Suns fan. They're gonna be like, they ain't had shit. We knew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Dame and, and Giannis thing. They're playing together way more. Um, they changed up the rotations. Damian Lillard went to to Adrian Griffin for the second time this year, where a player had to go to Adrian Griffin to say change this. And Adrian Griffin was like, "You think I think you know what you talked about? We're, what are we doing in the first part of the season? Dame was playing six, and he was off six. Playing six and off six. Dame was like, "No, I'm so I I need to be in a rhythm. I want to play the entire first quarter, and I want to play the entire third quarter." He did that with the Blazers. Exactly. So this is just what he knows best, yeah. and he's like. Can we do that? That's what I'm used to. And since they've done that, obviously the offense is looking a lot better. Um, and Dame has looked been shooting a lot better since then. Um, we're seeing a lot more two man game, and it's not always pick and roll um, like we thought, but it's it's working. The offense is looking good. Giannis over the last six games is averaging like 38 points per game. Like he's he's dominating again yeah. um, after a slower start. And you know what he's been really, looking at? He's been really hitting those like pull up middies, and I feel like that's just such a like. 
it's a shot you want to give him, but if it, it's also the shot, it's like if he's hitting that, it's like I don't know how we guarding him tonight. Yeah, honestly, I would live with that shit. <laughs> That's what I would too. But it, it's hard to say that when he be now, making. Now you say a pull up three, then it's like no, nah, oh, the pull up. He had won him a game. Um, well, like a few days ago, where he hit a dagger pull up midi to top off his forty point game. I like those, but then it be games where they not falling and he's still taking them, and I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah. get, get. Just get get, get to the there. bath. Yeah, get there. Yeah. Get there. Man. Uh, but no, I feel that. Is it my turn? Yes, sir. Uh, get your statement. The next thing was the, the, the Spurs. Um, they really just need that point guard play, that consistent PG play. Uh, I came up with some of my podcasts who they should be looking at. Who? There's this guy who we know to be a consistent point guard. But the team he is currently on. Tyus Jones. Ice Jones. Bring the brothers together? But people love that. People love those stories anyway. <laughs> so I said that on probably like if I get but yeah, like he's a fourteen million dollar guy. They have what Devontae Graham and some uh Doug McDermott or some do some type of swap and let him just organize it. Yeah. Are they gonna make the playoffs and no. go crazy? But it gives them some structure that I think can help this team go forward. You know what I'm saying? And Tyus Jones, you still can do the Jeremy Sohan experiments if, if you yeah. want to, the, the, theoretically. He don't, you know, Tyus Jones, they got to play 38 minutes a game, but it gives you somebody in there that has the the composure to run and orchestrate a team and give it some type of consistency because Victor Wimbiyama should not have weeks where he's shooting 38% from the field like he did this last week. Yeah. I'm sorry. Seven, seven what? Seven five. Seven five, that ain't good enough. <laughs> but he still averaged eighteen and twelve Yeah, I was gonna say he, yeah. he he would take a lot of tough shots. I mean, even for seven four and you're not getting contested, it's just like, dang, you're gonna pull up right in that man's face. <laughs> the name of the game is to get as many easy yeah. ones as possible. I remember somebody was I forget who it was, but talking about like the reason why people like that people will be loving the post. Because it's so like it could be flashy times when you're hitting those post fades and you're facing up, but it's like when you're posting up, the best thing is to get closer to the basket because that's just the easier shot. Yeah, you know. So I'm also reading this article about James Dolan that just came out. Um, he did this ain't this is negative, ain't it? I guess it depends on what you look looking. So we know that the the New York Knicks filed a lawsuit against the Toronto Raptors about need stealing 10 million, whatever, whatever they asked we for need 10 million. million. And they but, say they're going to get five of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before launching the suit against the Toronto Raptors that included questioning Adam Silver's objectivity, Knicks owner James Dolan resigned his position of the Board of Governors Influential Advisor in Finance and, com- and Media Committees. And I'm reading... What the fuck does that mean? So uh, usually make it up position. <laughs> I'm reading to figure out exactly. Does that impact anything? Let me get a job and enjoy of being the head director of Flash It Only. <laughs> <laughs> He's the head chief of communication commands. <laughs> is he done with the Spurs? Yeah, that was the one thing I'll add to the Spurs is they're they're starting to spiral into being a bottom feeder. Yeah. After yeah, they a good are. Start, you know what I'm saying? It was some. It was the wins against the Suns. It was like yeah, they yeah. could maybe be on yeah. some shit. <laughs> um, it didn't mean anything, by the way. I read the article. I also talking about at least had the Nets, which a couple days ago I had put in the chat. Like I don't know if it's just me, but this neat, this Nets versus Heat game is just like mid. And what made it so bad is it was like it was only two games that day, and so you were basically forced to watch that game. So, yeah, it was like a Thursday. Yeah, the Nets are okay, like a cool team. I think I had them making the uh, the playoffs or being a little bit above the plan when yeah, we first you had started. Them as a six. And stand on, stand on business. Right, right, stand on business. I mean, I did. I'm not. I'm so not saying odd, I, I still think, feel I like. I think I did. Th- no, we know what you did. I don't it's, know if I said. We know where it's at. No, uh, have faith in that, especially because they they are going through some injuries too. But like, they just they lose. Uh, uh, you they you don't, don't have the talent. They don't have the insta, talent. You're an insta baddie. I'm an insta belly. Why? Cause you ain't loyal. These motherfuckers got they. The injuries are the injuries are your big. Backup, where it's like I'm still believing what I said because they hurt. If they was healthy, they'd be. They just don't said, have that. Nah, they the they just don't got the talent. <laughs> like they'll beat teams that they should, but they're gonna lose the teams that they get. Like the other stars probably gonna turn up on them. It took you until now to realize that. You I were telling you that in the off season that this team is talented, but they don't have top end hey, talent. Time out. 
you included in this because the two in seats was telling the two out seats this when we was building our predictions. I thought they would be better than what they are. Didn't but the one thing they will do. You didn't, is it because you thought they had more talent? No, I just thought, like, they could be a fun regular season. I thought they would be like, a gritty-ass team. Yeah. I, that's Which, I, I think they still have characteristics of that, but, again, some of the injuries don't really help them out. But they are the one of the most average teams in the NBA. They At are. one point, they were 15th in offense and 15th in defense like, <laughs> with a 500 record. They, like, they do get up their are. threes, though. Yeah. They get up their threes. They, they got some fun things going on. Yeah. But it's just, yeah. I would say the one thing that could support that thinking is the injuries, man. They miss Nick, Nicholas Claxton for a little time. Now they missing, uh, yeah, Ben Simmons ben and Simmons. Cam Thomas. Yep. So, but yeah, I mean, the talent, we 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 told you that before day one. Thought they could make something happen. Not too late. In a league where it's Giannis's and Dames on the same team, it's not you know, too late. Booker's and, ben and, and, back. and and Durant's on the same team. Uh, the Orlando Magic are one of the top defenses in all of basketball. Got to watch it firsthand a couple different times against my Chicago Bulls. They held them to 33 points and a half twice. <laughs> and then they after also, that, I'm like, let's see what else they got. They go against the Indiana Pacers, and yes. now it's not even just the defense. The mm-hmm. offense is rolling and rolling and rolling. They're one of the most – one of the more – I want to say most. One of the more fun teams to watch. The offense is still – Really clank, uh, clunky at times, but the defense is as real as it can get. You know, I, I think this is a big enough sample size where you add the second half of last season and the beginning of this season to say that this team is really good defensively. It's about how do we transition some of that to the offensive side? Um, is that potentially trading for an offensive powerhouse that currently lives in Chicago? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but they got a lot of good things going on. Jalen Suggs has, I guess, changed the narrative about him. Um, Marcus Smart guy. He's like adopted he's, he's a Marcus role. Smart. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's like adopted that role. He's modern Marcus Smart. Drafted around the same. Well, they, uh, he was fifth, right? Oh, was he fourth? Who? Marcus. Marcus was fourth in his draft class? Marcus Smart was fifth. Fifth? I say. Either way, drafted around the same time. Or sixth. Um, and they have both curated a role where it's like, I'm going to be a hustle defense. I'm going to hit some crazy Six. shots. Six. Okay, I'm going to hit some crazy shots here and there. And I think he's really going to be the modern marker smart without the DPO. Can y'all name nope. five players drafted before Marcus Smart? I got. I can't even put together the year in what my mind. What year is that? The Andrew Wiggins year. Oh, so Andrew Wiggins okay. is one. <laughs> yeah. Alright, guys. I did my part. If y'all KB, if y'all can't tell me who was number two, y'all boy, I got to start bringing that belt. If you can't tell me who number two, I, I I damn near don't want you to speak the rest of the podcast. Andrew Wiggins draft. I'm not asking you for nothing peculiar. This 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 is me telling you that you should know this. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't tell y'all or crucify y'all for something that I don't expect y'all to know, or something I think y'all ain't supposed to know. Mm-hmm. The person who is number two in this draft, you should know. I'm not good at draft class. It don't matter. I don't know. It don't matter. Okay, go through our history. Give us number two picks that you know. That's going to mess them up. No, it's not. It shouldn't. Andrew Wiggins versus who? When they was Come coming on, boys. In, it was Andrew Wiggins versus a certain number two. Dude. I'm not included. I know the answer. I'm not included. Right? Right. Okay. Come on, guys. Mm. It, it ain't really... Okay. Is it this went, guy in the league? Listen. That's too much. Listen, it went... Him saying that... Gives you an indication, but it get, it went Wiggins, blank, and bead. Who is that dude right there? He's a small four. Uh, small four, but but I, I number need, two picks in history. And I need y'all to understand. I'm emphasizing that both of y'all should know this. So you got to think why? What is it an indication to you? What, how are you ever connected to an NBA player? You ain't related to any. So oh. what's the next correlation to you? He's two? from Chicago. Oh. Jabari Jabari Parker. Yes. Hey hey. High five, big fella. Jabari fucking Parker, who went to college where? I can tell you. That's actually. He went to Duke. <laughs> That belt coming. Bro, that, <laughs> that motherfucking belt. Whoo, that belt going to be so fucking hot when it I touch got that. I'm going to whip your ass when I get home, look. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man, is it on me? It's on me, man. Man, 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 man. Y'all gave me some crazy teams, man. Um, you <laughs> Let's put this out there. He said, y'all pick y'all teams. I'm going to get the rest of whatever y'all just don't pick. <laughs> but I was hoping that modesty would be like, let's let's say him the Sixers. Let's say him the, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I took teams like the Wizards. What the fuck is it? The Nets. Uh, um, let's talk about the Pelicans. Uh, quick notes I got for the Pelicans. No identity. I still don't know what's their identity. I know what it should be, what I thought it would be, but as far as the facts and the actual stuff in front of me, I don't know their identity. Uh, they are top five in steals and uh, opponent three point percentage, so kudos to that. Uh, average or b- below average at everything else, and they, you know, they give up more points than they score, which is not good if you want to win <laughs> basketball <laughs> games. So um, I just don't, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very confused with this team because there's, there's moments. Where you look at this team, and it's like, there it is. Remember when they beat the Mavericks? And the Nuggets. Last like, night was one of those moments. Um, I guess the Kings, they were about 40 at one point. Yeah, they were. So and The Kings were rolling. But then they have other nights where it's just like, what the f- is this? Mm-hmm. What am I watching? The injuries are consistent. Um, Jose Alvarado's back. He's back. He's back. We were at the Friends of Giving, and somebody – up in it was the Mason. Mason was asking about him. It was just like what, like, and it was like I'm glad that people feel that way because that's how I feel. I'm like, what, like, why was he out so long? <laughs> so almost a full year, bro. From February into now, and he came back, and he was out there doing his thing. Do what he do. I'm gonna continue to say it, man. I think at some point they're gonna hit a crossroads where they're gonna have to make some type of move. Um, whether that's packaging up, they got a, they do have a lot of intriguing things, and they have draft capital too. Maybe they Drew should Holiday. take the uh, less is more theory into consideration because this is a team all of us up here and a lot of people watching was extremely hyped about for the future because it's like man, they got this, they got that, they'll have youth, they got vets, they got depth, they got size, shooting, scoring, isolation, fast pace, uh, Herb Jones, they got defense, they had everything it seemed like, and now we watch them and it's like. Something is missing. I just can't put my direct finger. Could it be on Trey it. Murphy? Yes. It could it be. be Trey Murphy? The missing piece that you're talking about. Because I, I think about their lack of sh- jump shooting and think that Trey Murphy can not fix all of that because he's only one person. But he adds. He definitely element. helps a lot though. It adds a ton of ton of space into that team. Um, and they also he, are missing Matt Ryan now. So that was their, that was their shooter. Why good Trey old Murphy. Matt Ryan? I think he helps gone. a lot. But I. But we've also kind of seen him with the team and I'm I'm my question always for Trey Murphy is it is there an extra step for him that won't be available with the current current construction of this team because you're saying that as if him being just like a floor spacer is there yeah. more to Trey Murphy game where he's just it not might like be a this? moment like you said with the current roster because from what like what they have they they really trust like Brandon Ingram and Zion making the plays down the stretch so to be like we're gonna give an extra five extra or three to five extra isos to Trey Murphy or letting him work it's, I don't really see that happening right now unless he's taken off. You know, he probably he definitely works best as a guy that's spacing the floor for them to make plays off the like the catch or defending like with Herb Jones and everything. Like like that's his prime role right now. It seems like I see him have some explosive nights where I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, this could be more, could be more there. <clears throat> but that's why I was just like, it's good though that especially with Bi, you still kind of like hope to see like pro- uh, progress from Zion, but like. Being able to be that guy that's the lead playmaker, even if you're naturally like a scorer, it's just being able to get everybody involved too. That's why CJ like missing she's, uh, CJ is so important because like he's the one that go, he's a, not only just a guard when he stretches the floor, but like he's great off the ball when those guys are working too. And that's some of the problem with a clog and come in at because you got we got Ingram, mm-hmm. Trey Murphy, you have Herb Jones, Dyson Daniels, CJ McCollum, Jose Alvarado. All of these guys are just, you know, you want CJ there because of the offensive uh, steadiness that you're saying he brings. But I also want Dyson Daniels out there because I see what he can do in certain matchups defensively with mm-hmm. Herb Jones. They can hound a Luka Doncic and things like that. They could they can make it tough for some of the opponents. So it's like, you, you I don't know. It's it's a lot to figure out, but they're gonna have to figure it out because it's not too many teams where we wait around five years like. You know, yeah. This is it, man. This team could be special. <laughs> Luckily for them, though, they are still relatively young. Like a lot of those guys are young, so I guess being patient isn't a bad thing. Um, 
So I guess they probably gonna give it time, especially with Trey Murphy being out. I don't really see them rushing until they actually get to see everything on paper and see it all. I bet they don't be patient. You don't think so? Why I bet not? I bet somebody get popped because money matters. And Brandon, like one Brandon, of the top guys, Brandon like, Ingram got two years left on that contract. A lot of people around the league is getting paid that I'm sure he thinks he's better than or just as good a, good as. Next year, he's going to be on the last year of his deal. And if they're not playing at a certain level, it's going to be out there about his availability. If not this year, depending on how bad this, this season could go. Yeah, yeah. Or it could go up. Yeah. You know, they're in that level where I can't read them. They could go win uh, five in a row. They could lose the next three. I, I You know what I'm saying? They're just one of those teams. So we'll see. But if they get ugly, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. CJ McCollum contract is not it's not sexy either. Nope. The Blazers paid that man. As he deserved it. <laughs> uh next thing we got is the Sacramento <laughs> King. What? Oh, uh, I guess he deserved it. <laughs> uh the Sacramento Kings, man. Um one of the more um this is a team that really can't afford to lose Fox. Um, I know that's being obvious, but when they didn't have him, they just didn't look good. And now within the last two weeks, they're now a top 10 offense, top 10 defense. Like That's like the flip. Did they get up to top 10 D? Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. Well, in, within the last two weeks. Oh, just that two weeks. Yeah, span. just the gotcha, two weeks gotcha. span. Yeah, the last two weeks they gotcha. have been. Um, and a part of that is because Fox was out and now he came back. He brought a new life to the team and they're now all just playing better. Sabonis is having an amazing year. Um, all NBA type season from Sabonis. So. They they got a nice little thing going on over there, and I just hope that Fox can stay healthy because last year they were the healthiest team in the league. I don't know if that's going to be replicated this year. Mm. Mm. Fox is disgusting, man. Just, yeah. yeah, they. I mean, Fox is already one thing. They got two guys. It's like really hard to stay in front of them. Malik Monk and Deer and Fox, and these guys like play off each other really, really well. And then Sabonis, man, back to that like passing offense. He gets everybody involved, bro. And you got a lot of like the the effort that Keegan and, and Harrison Barnes are playing with. Like they're playing when Fox is out there, they play really good basketball. Yeah, they do. So it, they're a fun team to watch. But like I, I agree with you, they had their stats with Fox out the lineup were terrible. Yeah, they I were would like love nine, to see them yeah. try to be a team that could be buyers. They said yeah, that. Yeah, they are. They, Sham said it yesterday. Zach Levine, they expect Zach them to be OG Pascal. And Pascal. I just don't think that Jeremy Grant should have been added. Of those things, I don't think they want that five year contract. It's a long time, ain't it? Um, Zach, Zach Levine shit is what four three, how? If you don't this year then three years, so that means Jeremy Grant's four. Still a long time this year and four. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, no. I think Zach's is. I'll double check it. Huh? I think it, Zach's might be three years now, because I think he signed for four, but that was last off season. Oh. Okay, I see what yeah. you mean. Now, if that's the case. Yeah, he's got this year, next year, year after that. So three years with an option at the end for the fourth year. Is it a team player option? It's player no, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, he'll probably if that's at forty eight million. He better take that money. Team players aren't going for that team option no more. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a rough. I think they will, but not when you make them forty eight million. No, I felt like, I always felt like team options were for like role players. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to give your star a, a, a team option. Yeah. Like that's the player option. Young players and players who definitely are on. Do the Kings have a package that's worth OG or Pascal Siakam? Because uh, they're not trading you, Keegan. You would have to start with Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter, Harrison um, Barnes, money wise. Yeah. And and how many? What's the intriguing piece that gets them to bite? I, I don't know. It's draft has to be draft, draft, draft picks. Yeah. Davion Mitchell. Davion Mitchell is getting DMP coach's decisions. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Keon Ellis is taking Davion his spot Mitchell. as the backup. Shout player. out Keon Ellis. Hey, that's your boy. <laughs> you gonna ask me what college he went to? I'm, for that. I'm trying to figure out why that's not your boy. Uh, Keon Ellis he was got a, game. But no, I mean, I remember early, early in on the summer we, league. in Summer League, Mike was like, uh, oh, look, that guy. That's why I said it. Uh, I was going to say. He's a Mike type of guy for sure. But he took the spot of Davion Do Mitchell. Do you know what college you went to? No. I don't think I'd be able to answer that either. Keon I'm so Ellis. disappointed in y'all. What college did Davion Mitchell go to? Uh, he went to uh, did, and did, Baylor. Didn't, David, didn't did, uh, Davion Mitchell get hurt at first? I don't know. Either way, he was getting the coaches' assistance. He played the last two because um, it was a blowout yesterday. And a game before that, Kevin Herter didn't play. Speaking of it, re- where's the King fans? They don't care because De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis are so good. That was telling me 
Davion this, Davion that. You kept talking about the Davion shit. Yeah, I did. What up? I don't think they, they just don't care anymore. <laughs> they shouldn't care. That's why I was trying to tell them when they was reaching out to me. Y'all was winning. Why are you telling me this? I still stand on what the fuck I said. On I'm a, I'm a, you know why? Because I'm a draft guru. <laughs> and in the next five years, I'll be on somebody's front office saying, no, Pat Riley, we going this direction. We that, taking EJ Brees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad business decision. <laughs> you make more money doing this than you do doing that. Well, I can't do both. I didn't say I would leave this. I don't know, man. I've seen a- all I got to do is go in the office for one day in June in a war room, go in there, erase all this shit. You know how disrespectful I would be? <laughs> you just walk in there. And just I just walk it. in like, wait, y'all got, y'all had Davion Mitchell up here? Hey, give, give me an eraser. <laughs> wipe that name off. <laughs> um, no disrespect, but we got De'Aaron Fox. So we're wiping that. And we had Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> so we're wiping that name off the board. We're definitely not doing that. I'm gonna, Hold up. This is Memphis. Y'all got Zaire Williams up there at 10? Now, if he can be there at 19, we'll do that. But I want you to race him at 10. Okay. I ought to save a lot. Hey, Hornets, y'all got Kai Jones up there? <laughs> um, no disrespect. We'll draft him. But probably not that high. After Davion Mitchell, here are the next five draft picks. No, no. Go further. I'll keep going. Okay. It's Zaire Williams at 10, James Booknight at 11, Josh Primo at 12, Chris Dorte at 13. And they got Chris Dorte now. Moses Moody at 14. <laughs> Moses Moody at 14. Corey Kispert at, at 15. Alperin Shingun at 16. Uh-huh. 17 is uh, Trey Murphy the third. 18 is Trey Mann. And then Kai Jones, Jalen Johnson, Keon Johnson, Isaiah Jackson, and so on and so forth. Go check my tweets from that time. I say Trey Murphy is not a guy you want to let dip. Memphis, if you're going to take a reach, take it. Let it be. Him. And they did. And then they traded him <laughs> for Zaire Williams. <laughs> that's that's what they did. Uh, wait, 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 okay. wait. What you mean they traded him? The draft pick that was Zaire Williams, they traded up for by giving up the draft pick that was Trey Murphy. But the, okay, I see what you mean. Yep. I yeah. think they gave up two picks, if I'm not mistaken. Our Brent Shingun was to the OKC Thunder. They traded him for two first-round picks. Because that's – because uh, who else did the Rockets get that year? Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very, very good, good draft. draft. <laughs> good draft for yeah. them. They also had Josh Christopher, your boy, <sighs> and Ushman Garaba, yes. my boy. <laughs> who ended up going to the Thunder. Yeah. For a little bit. He said, y'all going to regret this. I really thought Josh I thought Josh Christopher was going to be like a Marcus Smart. He had a really encouraging rookie year, I felt like, in the midst yeah. of a tough team to be on. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, yeah, I liked him. Whose turn is it? Mike, so I just want Okay. Uh, another team that I had was my Lakers. I was waiting for somebody to pick their favorite team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so far I learned that Jaylen like... Jalen Johnson, 20th. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. This team does like... As much as we, as I was talking to about like how the 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 moves in the off season, how the team is like fully ready, they don't feel that much different from the team like last year. Like we don't shoot the ball well, probably gonna get to the line a lot, but it's mostly LeBron James got to like ninety percent of the games. LeBron James has to be like thug, like he has to be dogging for us to be winning and pulling out those games, which is just not good for the Lakers. The silver lining to that is it's good for everybody else because we get to watch yeah. LeBron be great like yeah. all time, mm-hmm. you know. And it's kind of crazy to think. I had tweeted it yesterday. LeBron is playing at a level where it's like he could play this good to like he's in his forties. Yeah, like mm-hmm. he's gonna be a top ten player for. Well, he's about to be in his forties. Yeah, he's about to be thirty nine. It's like so fifty. He can play. <laughs> he's he, he's shown sign of like regression, but like his sign of regression is still like top ten. Should he play till he's fifty? <laughs> if he can, shit, why not? Don't do it. Please enjoy. Life out. Play it to you. He say he want to push the boundaries. Like he say he want to push. Boundaries. He's doing that. Yeah. Play you, you're 50. Nobody has. So okay. You're 21 for Brian, right? Who's the yeah. oldest player to ever play in the league? Probably Robert Parrish. I see. Um, How old was Udonis Haslam? Not Udonis 50. Udonis Haslam didn't play. <laughs> that's on a roster. <laughs> if So, year 21. There's not a lot of players in NBA history to get to year 21. Yeah. If you added up every single player that played in year 21's points per game, it's not even close to what LeBron is doing right now. That makes sense. Cause Think about that. Yeah. It's, it's like him, Curry, uh, KD, all 35 plus, top Nat, 10 in score. Nat Hickey. He that, a, that shit does not count. <laughs> <laughs> Nat Hickey does not count. Nat Hickey was 46 years old. <laughs> that shit does not count. I think LeBron. He might. was an orthodontist, too. How about add that to his resume? You know what college he went to? 
Baylor or BYU. With the Amherst. <laughs> I'm, just joking. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It was in that Kearney. Um, <laughs> it seemed just also. I mean, the defense has been okay. I think like sometimes they're like there's times where it's like we we are a really really good defense and that's helped us win games. But other times it's just like man, we have such silly mistakes, you know. And I think like we're not that top ten defense yet. I think we're hovering around like 13, 14, something like that. But the offense, man, we're like bottom in offense, which is just like that's. You can't do that when teams are putting up 120 points a game now. Yeah. Nah, Hickey, 5'11 point guard, man. <laughs> he played the game the right way, man. <laughs> Dribbled the ball with his right hand. Exclusive. Christian Wood, though. Christian Wood and uh, Cam Reddish. They've been playing better. Austin Reeves, too, he had a big shot for us. So, Yes, he did against the um, big three. Was that Rockets? Uh, long Rockets three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that diamond goal from LeBron. Hall of Fame. No, nah, that that's limitless. That's what that is. But the dimer helped that no, a lot. That's limitless. LeBron emoted <laughs> too many times in that game. Hey, I, you I'm know, loving the new celebration. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving the smoking and passing. Austin Rivers was like, that shit with Dylan Brooks. He's like, that shit motivated him. And I was like, <laughs> but the thing with the Dylan Brooks shit, he missed the layup and he was saying, I smoked it. Oh. And then I see people like, look at this celebration. But he also like, had one where he, he missed the and one where he looked at his hand. He said, pop, pop, yeah, yeah. pop. And, he like, and then he, he stomped on, on his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did the smoking with that too. After that, he did the smoking. And that just show you, which, oh, man. that show you those accounts that don't be watching, but they can find a little clip real quick or see yeah. somebody else post it. If he was watching, you would see he missed the and one. He, he did it with like, Anthony Davis too. He, he didn't do it with like, just, he bah, didn't do it bah, just I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> Oh man! I guess that's a new little group thing. They they smoking and they passing it, pass the wood to wood. But why would you do that though? If I smoke the layup, why would I give the the smoke to Mike? Because that don't that mean that he about to smoke a layup? <laughs> unless he was, unless he was celebrating with the pass he threw him or something. I yeah. don't know. But he did well, miss yeah. a layup. It was like I thought he was saying I smoked it. Yeah, I thought he was. Just, I thought it was just like an implication of like we smoking that Houston pack, like we smoking that Rockets pack. <laughs> it's, he's for not about fit. I was gonna say <laughs> not about unk. <laughs> I pulled these out and posted on Instagram, Unk. Mm-hmm. Yo, not not Cuzzo, not Big Bro, Unk. You got kids my age. Ronnie put them on. It's a great watch, though. <laughs> it's such a great watch to watch LeBron do all little random shit. The, y'all got, I can't wait to, well, I can't wait till it's done. And we relive the last couple years, bro. He's just been goofy as hell on the court. Just the, goofy. The one when you picked up window cards. Yes, bro. That's like an all. all-time LeBron moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I need somebody to file him on a game winner this year. Oh, so, so he could do the tantrum like yep. he did against. I need table. one more of those. <laughs> oh man, don't hey, don't ever bring don't bring that up when we bro, record because that's gonna make me knees, get bro. on his and like begging the floor. Bro. Remember, he was so it hurt. was a time where I think it was. This motherfucker Pat Beverly came with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> and he was like. <laughs> <laughs> And then he got a text. It's crazy because the ref, the ref was looking at it for a second. And he's like, "Hold on, tech, tech, tech. <laughs> The ref had to process what. Happened. And then the dude that ref the game had to resign because they started to investigate. Oh him. yeah, that he he's had a burner account. Mm. Wait, motherfucker got Celtic jerseys all this shit. He just be doing shit, bro. You remember? I think it was Kevin Hart and Drake was at the game, and like he was walking past Kevin Hart. He took Kevin Hart drink and gave it to Drake. <laughs> yeah, just be doing shit. I remember that for sure. Speaking of Drake, Drake was on the Raptors like um, the that's make broadcast. Movie. Yeah, he was tripping, bro. I think they was talking about like. See, I don't even know, know who this guy is. Nick Nurse is not here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's talking about yeah. yeah. He said something about Jakob too. He said something about how his name was spelled Jacob, but you pronounce it Jakob or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He did. He did make a joke like that. Um, but he was giving credit to Matt Devlin and stuff. Like, man, what y'all do is so hard to not be biased and stuff. And I was like, well, they are biased, but like a good amount. Yeah. Some people like the Warriors commentators are too fucking biased. I think Matt Devlin and the company are in the war- middle, which yeah, is good. Warrior people are warrior people. I actually watched the Warriors broadcast to see how bad it can get. Like, like it has to be a marketing thing now mm. for them. Why what they was on there doing? To last night, it wasn't a lot. Um, but other nights, is real bad. They ain't never seen a foul that they team committed. Draymond Green is a saint. <laughs> Every time somebody drives, he's getting beat up, except for when it's the opposing team. Uh, but it's it's fun because of it's it's bad, you know. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Kalina Azabuki, or don't I don't know. They were they were really getting on Fred Van Fleet. Who is Kalina Azabuki? Who who is Kalina Azabuki? I don't know. 
I don't think I've ever heard that name before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you. I've man. heard the last name Azabuki before. Not the first <laughs> name. Why did you hear Azabuki? Azabuki, Azabuki, Azabuki. He played remember that? He used to play for the Warriors. As a bookie, yeah. as a bookie, I, mean, as a I think Macy used to be saying that. Yeah, because of Kalena and the yeah. 2K drafts we used to do. You, you might know as a bookie now because of the big fella. You don't as a bookie. Who went to what college? I don't know. Kansas. My next team, since you went with your favorite I team. I love this college shit because I could just go on. I, I, bookie, I got one for KB. I'm listening. Tell me. What the Vry. Did Gary Harris go to? Uh, Gary Harris was a Big Ten guy, right? Yes. Um, mm, he was a Big Ten guy for which Big Ten school? Like, I, it's crazy. I can remember he's Big Ten, but not. Um, I don't want to pull a Mike Hurd or and put the state when it don't. Sp- he went to Michigan State. Yes, he did. Okay, great. I, Future of Chicago you. Bull, Gary I'm, Harris. I'm proud of you. He should have always been a bull. That's the that, yes. that's, that irks me. I'm a big I I like Gary Harris, but I loved Gary Harris. I ain't like Gary Harris when he first came. Because he fucked up the Lakers. He fucked up the Lakers. He, still, he was he, still he still was does. talking shit he still too. Does. But and that's when he used to wear two sleeves. Oh, don't don't take me back to early <laughs> nuggets. That's uh, when he wasn't even no like defender like that. This is when he was supposed to be getting buckets out there. But yeah, he should have always been a bull. I loved him at Michigan State. He was incredible. And when I seen the Bulls, um, they drafted and traded him, right? We yeah. went down this before. Yes, yeah, they, when I they, seen them draft him, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, they traded I, him and Nurkis for Doug McDermott. I love this. Like, I can get hit with the Bulls. Like, I was this, off a of perk during that draft. This is going to be because of your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I was off. I'm like, this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Never been so high in my fucking life. For real? Yeah. That was uh-huh. well before I was smoking. Cause I'm finna say my career had me high as hell, and I ain't even puffing. <laughs> <laughs> I was out of contact. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bulls are bad. That's your team. Yep. That's all you had to say. Yep. What's, what what makes them bad? What what could fix them? Tearing it all down. Why is this team bad? Because I'm putting up putting up one point through seven minutes in a the game. They won a game. They won it, but still. I don't even know how you get to that. That's, there's, there's you you watch them play offense, and you watch almost any other team in the association, and you recognize this team has zero fluidity compared to the next. But I'm asking why is that coaching? Is that player? Is I think it's a both? combination of coaching and players. We have three players on our team that have never really be considered a plus playmaker. Under Demar had his year in San, in Antonio. San Antonio, but for the most part, these are guys that are I'm going to get my own bucket type dudes. And it has been that way. And the only time it was that way is when Lonzo was on the team because he was a pass-first guy. And we haven't been able to replicate any of that. Look at our roster. How many positive playmakers are on the team? Our point guard is Kobe fucking White. So and I love Kobe. He be doing his thing sometimes. Play, He's not a playmaker. Your yeah. best playmaker is Nikola Vucevic. It's Vucevic. Yeah. But we don't play through Vucevic. Because of course. Why would we? You know what I'm saying? At the same time, why would we? <laughs> but that's – I feel like because I am a Bulls fan and part of this is my podcast, we talk about the Bulls more than they deserve to be talked about. So I'm going to end it by saying they're bad. I had a bone to pick bad. with that too. Mm-hmm. I did not want to talk about the Knicks. And I was going to say that we shouldn't talk about it on the team because – I will talk about the Knicks for you. I'll trade you. Here, who you got? I'll trade you the Knicks, um, the teams I have remaining. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the group chat. I have Philly, OKC, and Miami. You take one of those, I'll take Knicks. I'll take OKC. Perfect. Bulls are bad. Go. Next. OKC. <laughs> OKC is ahead of schedule. Is OKC still the second in West? Yes. Um, oh, no, no. The Nuggets are now currently. Okay. okay. They're, they're right there, though. It's like a three-way tie down there. OKC is way ahead of schedule. We f- First and foremost, I want to put this out there because somebody commented, commented this on my uh, – I don't know if it was a podcast. Um I got so many videos now on my YouTube that's so basketball. I don't know what it is. It could have been a short, whatever. He says, yo, and I want y'all to respond to this. Mm-hmm. He said this thing. I misspoke. I said, man, they got a bunch of guys under 25. Shea is 25, not under 25. Um, but he was like, y'all need to start. He's like, uh, people need to start putting Shea in this group with Luca and them. Y'all be trying to pair him with these young guys and all of that. I'm like. My reply was, bro, he was all NBA. He's among the elite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Do y'all think that he don't get paired with the? He he, he definitely he does. does. He does. Yeah. What the hell? That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> he definitely does. And he, I I just didn't understand the comment, but it's like I don't know. Nobody is like uh J uh Shay and Jalen Green, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. You know. You know what I'm saying. So, if anything, I I feel like people would be waiting. I guess for like that playoff series, you know, where it's like he takes off. But other than that, like he's been basically like everything. He's you been, know, he's been a winner his entire career. I didn't I didn't I didn't really really get that one. But yeah. Uh, Shea is obviously doing his thing. We don't really have to spend too much time on Shea, but I think the uh, the entering this this new thing with, with Chet puts them, like I said, uh, ahead of schedule. I think they can be the kings of last year, but maybe even better, and their trajectory is high. I'm still a little worried that at some point um, Josh Giddy doesn't fit the equation. Big slob wizard. Um, just because... He is he's talented. He's going to cost. They're already spending a lot of money. Chet looks like he's going to cost as well. Uh, J Dub. So when you start entering all of these different names, and then you start to have this need for role players, really, really, really role players, I could see somebody being an odd man out, and it's pointing to Giddy. No hate at all. Uh, y'all could use him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so we don't have anything to give them that they would want. Though. Patrick Williams. Oh, brother. Y'all saw the report that <laughs> teams are interested. more interested yeah, in Patrick Williams and Alex Caruso than, than yeah. that's crazy. Exactly. I was actually surprised to see Patrick Williams at a trade market. No, no. If you if you on Twitter, bro, Pistons fans want him. Hornets fans want him. But these uh, are just. Fans. But you know why though? Because <laughs> they probably feel like the Bulls have the a Bulls development team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Um, yes. And I'm not. I'm like not mad. This is the time. That's the time to buy. That's what fans don't think of. You just look at Patrick Williams on the surface and like, why would you want him? But like. I want him because the value is so low. I won't probably have to pay him a bag when he wants his next contract because him and his team don't have anything to show. I don't have to pay for potential. So now I'm going to get him. I'm going to lock him up. And then he's going to take off. And, and he's going to have a cheap-ass contract like Larry Market. We're going to increase them attributes. <laughs> Give him his boost. Every 10-game win, he get a plus. <laughs> uh, the, the, the but thunder. I like OKC. Okay, the Thunder, right. That's the team we're on. Um, Chet Holmgren is leagues ahead of what I thought he was going to be coming in as a rookie. Yeah. Yes. Like, head and shoulders as of right now, the rookie of the year. Is that – that's how we feel? I don't think that's like oh, – yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not out the realm. I know people have been like, Vic, 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 Vic. But I if was. You, I was. If you just watch OKC, it's just like he's he's just more ready. You know what I'm saying? And he's not the same, like, first option as Vic is, but he's yeah. damn near getting the same amount of points. Right. He doesn't have the same pressure right as Vic now. Yeah. It's Chet, but down the line, I'm still Vic. Like, oh, you would, sure. you, if you were picking between the build around, you're still picking Vic. <clears throat> Hell yeah. yeah. That makes sense. But um, do y'all think the media will view it that way and they won't just do the hype and just give it to Vic? No, I think Chet Holmes is the rookie of the year. Yeah. I, I don't, every stat is at the moment is pointing at Chet. Yeah, um, Vic just had and, a week where he shot thirty eight percent. And I also like the fact that Chet, what he's doing is translating to winning. Yeah, I know Vic. Well, I know Vic. Well, I know. Vic, I know, I know no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm just saying he's doing it on a winning team. I'm. I know Vic. Can't, but I see what you're saying, but you can't say that necessarily yeah. because Vic. If is Chet was with, on the Spurs, are they? No. Nah, okay then. Yeah. If Vic was on the Thunder, are they sucking? No. Okay. That's that's all. Yeah. Because when you got Shea Gills as Alexander, it could damn. Be sucking. <laughs> Give, I can play 19 minutes with OKC. I can do what Josh Giddy do. I'll be Isaiah Joe out there. I'm going to shoot. I'll get the fuck out of there. You're going to get a shot at him. Yeah, I, I see Josh Giddy not close out games, have four point game. You went to Isaiah Joe, who's shooting. Isaiah Joe shooting. Lights out. 90% from three. And now you want to be here. Uh, this is a I stat. Can put some pressure on myself. I could get six assists and three rebounds. True. <laughs> this is a stat from I, I got a couple days ago, so it's not completely, completely accurate as of right now because they just played a game against your Blazers and blew their ass out. The stat was right before that game. Last year, when you look at the spacing that Shea Gilles Alexander had, he was in the 32nd percentile, mm -hmm. meaning that it was below average. Yeah. This year, it's in the 91st percentile. So he has all the room in the world to be Shea Gilles Alexander. And big part is because Chet's shooting three 40 point line. plus yeah. percent from three. I, I mean, said the Joe guy. 40 plus, plus percent. The guy caught a turnaround Three inbound shot, yeah. over Wiggins to go into overtime. That when shit was crazy. That's another example of the Warriors broadcast being awful. He shot the shot, and Kalena book was like, his foot was on the line. His foot was on If you look at the replay, he was he's like six inches behind yeah, he's the, line. the line. <laughs> he's not even close <laughs> to it. So they kind of robbed their fans of that like experience by making them think that it, it wasn't going to count as a three-pointer. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. Okay, see, so 
hierarchy of fun teams to watch, they're at the they're towards the top. They're okay. in S tier. Do you think they're one of those young teams that need to be taken seriously? Yes. What is your definition of taken seriously? Like, when it comes playoff time, they could probably be a team that goes on like a Cinderella run or something like that. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Similar to like what the Dallas Mavericks did like early when they went to the conference finals and all that. It's all the, the Dallas Mavericks not discrediting anything. That was such match matchup based though. Um that I think that's gonna have to be the same thing. Like yeah. there's gonna be teams that OKC wouldn't match up well against. And they just have to avoid, if they can avoid those teams, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Lakers want to see OKC in the first round. They don't. First of all, OKC. They're not going to have home court advantage because OKC is the better team. That's Mm -hmm. the first part. OKC has that thing out for us, too. And and Shea Shea has it, too, because, like, Shea has that thing where it's just, like, he goes out there and he's going to play for all that respect. Like, he's going to go against the the top guys in the league and he's going to show them up. You've seen the post with, like, Steph Curry and everything (laughs) like that. Like, he does it all the time. So when he goes against LeBron, he's going to be – He's gonna turn up. You sound like a Lakers fan. Why? Because y'all swear that everybody just gets up out of bed. I think when they do. She, no, 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 I, no. I'm just saying, Jalen's. I put up a clip of Jalen Suggs when yeah. y'all when y'all played against him the second time where he mm-hmm. did something. It wasn't even nothing miraculous. Man, if only he played like this against the other teams, he'd be really great. Like bro. somebody, you said that or somebody else? No, said somebody that? else said the uh, Lakers fan. Like I, I didn't, didn't think I didn't think that about Jalen Suggs until it's like he missed a game winning shot or like t- shot to tie it up, and he wanted to get like and all bounce back game against the Lakers. So I. That's where I thought that energy kind of came from. But, yeah, I wouldn't say I feel like that anymore. It was more so like when we was coming out the championship, we had that target on our back. But there is people that's like, I want to have my best game against the Lakers in the Staples Center uh, or against LeBron. You think it's Le- the Lakers or against LeBron? Uh, a little bit I of both. I think it's more so Staples It's a little bit of both. I think it's like the Knicks Staples Center. Yeah. Everybody's the celebrities right there. Mm-hmm. You know. Ain't no celebrities in OKC? No. Not too many. <laughs> Unless Cone pulling up No That's funny uh, <laughs> Cone Cone the fucking stop <laughs> right. Cone got his own Who do seat, they have bro? Own parking spot He pulling up with chains on Like Kirk Cousins <laughs> <laughs> They have somebody though They have Who is it I'm, I'm gonna look it up Real real quick Please It's, it's Bill Hader Bill Hader has been a diehard Josh OKC Hader's head? No And you you don't, Y'all don't know Bill Hader No No so Let me see a picture Y'all know Bill Hader Y'all know oh, Bill this Hader. fucking guy. <laughs> Y'all know Bill Hader. Maybe yeah, I know him. Name. I know him. You know um, him too. I've never. Does seen he him. do like some special? Oh, he's a com- he's a comedian. He's an actor. Oh. He was in um. Oh Harry, yeah, I know this guy. Harry, yeah, I know this guy. Um, they say Olivia Munn is an OKC Thunder fan. She was born in in Oklahoma City. The gymnast. Um, <laughs> no, the actress. Oh. Uh, these other people, I have no idea. Oh, you who said they are. none. Yeah, I thought you said Olivia. This is a dude that does it too, right? No, you that's should. Bill Skarsgård. Is it? I just his Mike. name popped up. Mike, the guy that does it is Bill Skarsgård. Told no need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on, bro, because it says Mike. He's the, I, I, I'm just Bill Hader out. is not it. All right, that's that's Skarsgård. Okay. All right. Okay. Can I'm you? Listening. I want you to confirm it for yourself. I'm. He, I'm looking. He hard headed. How long does it take to Google it the movie? Hard right, head make it soft ass. Here, here, I got it for you. That's Bill. Look at my phone. That's Bill Skarsgård. That's it. Oh my God, he wasn't it though. He was he was the grown up version of oh, um the, the, the dude with the yeah, yeah, yes was, you absolutely my fault I was on your I ass was looking at it. Said he was <laughs> in, I said he was in it too my fault the dude I the thought you when you say he was dude, it I thought yeah. you meant he was it. No, but he was talking. Bill Hader. You know my, fault, Mike. So my, fault, Mike. my fault, Mike. My fault, Mike. My fault, Mike. So we arrogant, right, bro. We were, for, we were both right. <laughs> Think he know everything and stubborn. I am stubborn. Specifically Damn. in my relationship. I can't be wrong there. That's what the fans be saying about you in the comments. I'm aware. And they say you think you hot shit because you got New Balances on. <laughs> he ain't really start wearing New Balances till you was wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> He also said Lazo should be in the G League. Oh no, it was a long time ago. He, he said he forgot he said, about that. Do you remember when he said Nikki Alexander Walker was the better Alexander? Yeah, you remember that? I was right. <laughs> what? I was right. At the time, no, no, no. At the time, he was better. That's all I was saying. Motherfucker ain't never been better. They had to, you know. And I don't know where you want. Matter of fact, I ain't even gonna do it. I say I, I know I didn't say some wrong stuff up. I wasn't even gonna talk about no I NBA got a, takes. I got a lot to say. Nikhil was the better Alexander at the time. He was the most notable name out of the Alexander family at that time. Who who one of up, them went to Kentucky? Who ended up being better? 
Shay. It's still to be determined. They got a long career ahead Shay. of them. <laughs> <laughs> Shay. All right, Derek, give us your next team. What you laughing at? Because I can. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even answer the question. That sounds like I could be so ass. Because <laughs> I got some shit you done said it did. <laughs> What did it's I say? The humble he beast. said what you laugh <laughs> <laughs> He said what you laughing at? You said cause I care. <laughs> they don't even answer the question. <laughs> He's just laughing to laugh. <laughs> Mr. Humble fucking beast. I'm a humble beast. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Is that glazing? Mr. <laughs> a little bit. A little Mr. bit. Mr. I can Mr. glaze myself. No, no, you, no. you got humble you was, bees from G Herbo, <laughs> right? Oh. And you put it on your fucking shoes. Like you Nike paid ID. extra on Nike ID to put a hundred dollars extra and waited nine that was weeks. More so about me though, it wasn't glazing him. But you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have called him. yourself that if you didn't hear him say it. And I wear these, y'all. He say, I ain't never would have seen. I ain't never think of LeBron's being the outside shoe. Next episode, <laughs> <about> to, <laughs> but he Wait, used to have. Did. No, no, no. I said that model. I said that model. I said that model was LeBron. <laughs> you know how many shoes this nigga don't wear? He wore Derrick Roses outside. <laughs> he wore Humble Beasts outside. Which is long ass KDs, by the way. <laughs> he wore LeBrons outside. Them purple LeBrons. The Martin ones. This nigga nope. got Martin edition. <laughs> I do. They are though. I, I yes. with those. They hard. But he wore them outside. He wears them outside. Yeah. I, I wear these once. Bro, you remember the one time he wore those with a different shade? Yes. Of- <laughs> he, had on hot, he had dark pink on with purple. Like, this don't match? <laughs> we all like, Derek, that, no. Nah. He like, this don't? Y'all sure? We like, bro. We had a baseball game? We had yes. a White Sox game. We like, Derek, it's six of us telling you it don't match, brother. It was, one of them was Mike. Oh, no, yeah. he don't match. Damn. You see, I just got those shots <laughs> on me. You did come here wearing seven different reds. That was, yeah. It was four. It was four. Okay. He getting better. That's the lane. He did say in the, in the group chat that he was going to start to put that shit on, though. I said, I'm going to try. I think we the should. The reason start I said that is because no matter what I usually put on, people like, you, they be no, talking. No, that's not true, though. That's disingenuous. I see comment sections now where, yeah. when you do look decent, they yeah. would say, Mike, step But it's game. crazy because it'll be like. Today's not that day, by the way. What do you think they. they, they professor. Dress, today professor, he dressed like a teacher. They do say something. That's somebody that holding nah, a right there. His I was, ass, I was hey, laughing you know to myself, like bro. Right now? Profes- Professor Ogilvy. Ogilvy. Yeah. Yeah. I was what laughing to myself earlier because, like, I just need that one picture. Who's your Nikki Parker? Um, Elena. So, well, I guess she got to be. Yeah. She might be my ass if I say somebody else. Yeah. She so can I was saying, like, yeah, she could fight. She didn't be my ass a couple times. What you do? I don't take much. I took her food. You a bitch. She don't play about that food. Them fingers, B. You want to take a little bit, nigga. Take a bit, <laughs> half of it. He's like, let me get a little piece of your beef. Oh, I'm sorry. My fingers, B. Now, what you laughing over there on the sound? <laughs> you don't keep going in circles like that. Because he be he talking about, man, I don't really like how this burger looking. Take half of it in one bite. It's about a five. Another bite is the rest of the sandwich. <laughs> Can I tell the people what, they, what Derek did the day after Friendsgiving? Can I tell this story before? Uh-huh. What did I it's do? It's very short. Oh. We went to... Uh, niche cooks, he made that stuff. Derek, like, he wanted to do that. oh, yeah, but even he was grubbing. He said, This shit nearly not that good. Like, that. <laughs> he was grubbing on oh, my f- side, he was fucking that <laughs> shit up. <laughs> the man oh. fucked that food up. It was like, It ain't good while eating it. I never, like, I don't know. When some shit ain't good to me, it's going in the garbage. I will say Derek carried that shoot because he was the one that was willing to eat it. He was. I did not touch that shit. I was on set like I'm good. And Derek was like, yeah, I'll take it. So I was to my boy Niche Cooks, man. So we had we got still a lot of teams left, I think. I don't know. We do. Who cares? Uh, we do what we want. Uh, we did Friendsgiving this we'll weekend. We'll finish on the next spot. <laughs> <laughs> we did Friendsgiving this weekend. And uh, there was a lot of food left over. Which I had a really good stuff. time. It was, a, it was a fun time. I uh, also came to realization we all just old and lame. Everybody was going by 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody. And I went to Flex House and went back home. I didn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next day comes around. And Suzanne come to my room. I'm like, yeah, Derek on his way. I'm like, what the fuck? Derek on his way? I ain't talked to Derek all day. Like, yeah, he about to come get some food. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. So I went to the kitchen, and she had brought out the food. I'm like, where his plate at? Like, you going to make him a plate? She said, no, he going to bring his own. <laughs> <laughs> the man came with his own. Was it Tupperware? Or was it, yeah, it was a like a look, It was like a little container. <laughs> yeah. This is unheard of. And he, came, he pulled up to the crib, got his own food. We was in a, a rec game. So I was like, what up, Derek? And he went to the kitchen, got some food, and left. It is do rag go too. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool to say. She reminded me when the waitress is like, 
Now everything on our menu was shareables. And she always emails like, what do you want? He's like, yeah, I'm going to take the steak. Let me get the mashed potatoes, too. She's like, you, you know the steak is for two. He said, no, nah, but I want my own steak. <laughs> <laughs> he, hey, I was worried. I was worried for that. I lady. thought he was gonna fight her. I was worried. Yeah, because it was a aggr- it was more aggressive than what yeah, you just made yeah. it seem like. He said, "No, I know I want my own." <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Sir." He said, "Maxi Cleaver gonna hear me say this." When Luca Dunst come out of nowhere, he's like, "Sir." <laughs> Their problem Sir. Here. wasn't Monte Morris there too. Yeah, like, on the other side. we were sandwiched. Yeah, yeah. he said, uh, "Luca says, sir." <laughs> but in front, we do not disrespect the women. <laughs> Derek say, Derek say, what the fuck out Derek, my way? He gonna pull out a cigarette, put that motherfucker on D myth. <laughs> Derek wouldn't even notice that it was Luke. <laughs> He'd be like, P, get this lame ass up in the <laughs> Like, Derek, that's Luca. It is? <laughs> he looked big in person. <laughs> He's talking, I thought he was a point guard. The funniest shit about. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. I thought he was a boy. <laughs> Why he's so big? Um, Kyrie come in. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was maybe the highlight of the Kyren day. Kyrie does this thing where everybody girlfriends is in in the environment and he is he's a great you if you got Slime friends, Kyron ain't one. He won't even look at your girl. <laughs> <laughs> Kyron, he will not make eye contact. Row, put his head down and does this in the lady's direction. Put his head down. <laughs> Nigga be looking like a prisoner, boy. <laughs> this is literally how he walked in. Oh my god! Because this is it's happened two years in a row now, so it's like it's not a thing. I mean, it's a thing. He really just don't look at the women at all. <laughs> 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 Everybody leaving. All right. It's good seeing y'all. <laughs> that boy Kyron sat down for five minutes to like get into it. Y'all took a shot. He was on plate number three within four minutes. I that boy him. was down, boy. He was <laughs> ET. I told him two hours before I left. Yeah, you know, if you want, you know, me and Dan ain't gonna eat all that if we end up taking it. You can take two beef. People started eating them. I was like, Dan, you wanna take this home? KB said they ain't gonna eat them. Like, yeah. He said, <clears throat> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, you can have a beef, man. Take a beef. He said, you told me I could take two. <laughs> I see you know it, you need his big beef and little beef. Bro, he can seal them bitches, too. He put them right in his pocket. They fit perfectly. Imagine you come home and you see this nigga pulling out beef out the pocket. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. Right, Derek, is it on you? It I, is. Okay. We got the Houston Rockets. Uh, Shane Goon is a problem, and everything just needs to run through him. Uh, I love the fact that they do. Late in that game against the Lakers. One on one against LeBron James, they gave that sophomore the ball and said, "Go get us a bucket," and he did it. Very tough I think bucket. He's a year three. Oh yeah, he is just in year three. My bad, my bad. Um, if he was a sophomore, shit. But and also, they also get kind of a team as we've seen in the last few games. They kind of struggle to close out games a little bit. Um, so I don't really, think, I don't know if there's a recipe for that. But they did, they kind of just give it to Shingo and Fred Van Fleet, and they kind of just play through that. So it's just cool to see them be competent. Yeah, be in games. Yeah, win or lose. I don't Dylan the defense. The the, yeah, Dylan the villain. I think the defense <laughs> may also the defense may stay there, but I think the offense is just it might not be top. A little 10. bit shaky. Yeah, yeah. I just think that we have like a guarantee that of the young core, Shingun is the one. Not saying yeah. the other guys can't be great, but like Shingun is the one of their young. Yeah, cores. he just plays with a certain type of ferociousness and like. Mm-hmm. He has so much skill, and he's so unorthodox that it's like it kind of catches people off guard. I think, and he's like sneaky, athletic. When he coming down that middle of the lane and he's rim running, he can catch a body. He can catch a body Easy. real quick. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. better move out the way. Yeah, I'm curious to see what happens because they don't own their own first round pick, so there's no incentive ever to really turn the switch off. It's like we're gonna be in every single game for 82 games, which is dope. Yeah, Mike. Uh, another team I had is the Raptors, which I guess like similar to how I was saying about the Lakers, how they kind of feel the same. The Raptors feel the same as last year where they're going to, you know, they're going to hound you defensively, but the offense and the shooting is probably just not going to be like, it's going to be, it's it's hard to come by those uh, on uh, game nights. And I don't know, I feel like they're just kind of like of a middle of the pack team. They don't have no clear cut option number one, I guess. Oh, Pat- I think they do now. I th- yeah. well, at least they know what they want to I, be their option. Yeah, Scotty Barnes. Yeah. yeah, Scotty Barnes is taking a jump this year, whereas like it's clearly him. Even he's at, up to 20 PPG now. Mm, like it still feels like, I mean, that's their option, I feel like, just universally. Because it true. could be Scotty Barnes one night. It could be, Pascal. It's been yeah. Pascal one night. OG can have a 20-point game. Dennis Shooter has had some pretty good scoring games. So it's like 
that go to they don't have that go to guy which i mean it could help you but also like closing out games that's tough Gary Trent Jr. had that 40 40 mm-hmm. point game too they put up 142 points on the pistons the other night in regulation Sky- just something yeah, I've, I don't, I don't know how you uh, give I up that much. I want Mike to give Gary Trent his his love. Gary Trent, he had eleven threes. That's a Gary Trent type of game. You know what? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I'm lying. It didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. I just want to... <laughs> He's been bad and injured. <laughs> Both I just want to see things. how much Mike would agree. If I just kept saying that. He said, "Yeah, eleven threes. Yeah, yeah, yeah." I was a nigga hit eleven three. <laughs> Scotty Barnes has been like amazing though. I like like not even just the he offensive. Sounded so pretty. convincing. It sounded like a Gary Trent game. Like he just ran. He I was got like, high. I really don't remember it's that a shit. Raptor fan. It paused the video. Like wait, <laughs> what did I miss? Erica or Casey? Like oh shit, I must have. I must have missed the game. Uh, Scotty Barnes, like the offensive jump is cool, but like the defense is still always really amazing. Because like I seen him probably close out like two games. Like I think one game early on they had like a big like twenty point game. Uh, Game comeback. Yeah, that was against the Wizards. And they was it against the Wizards? I just, it might have been, but he's like they got the game. He got the game when it's steal. Where like they had a time to get it up. No, like he he was there for the pass lane. I'm pretty sure he got the another same one. Same thing as the Spurs. He's had some times where he's closed out the game, not with a shot, but literally with the defensive side. And I think that's like a special player. Yeah, against the Spurs though, he he hit the big three. He like, yeah. he hit the yeah. big three, but he also stole the inbound. Yeah, he, he stole did. the inbound. He like baited him into. He was like literally playing like free safety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a beautiful steal right there. Uh, my next thing, I'll take the Knicks uh, off your hands. Um, M- Mitchell Robs has been amazing. Um, there, there's something like this is, I'm going to go to the gaming aspect, right? One thing that is extremely important that I guess is not maximized a ton at current game in real life because it's a lot harder is getting the extra possessions with offensive rebounds. I think that in the game of 2K, that's so important, you know, to get. But Mitchell Robson is adding six extra possessions a game just by his offensive rebounder. Yeah. And it's going to be hard not to capitalize on some of those. Um, we're seeing Julius Randle look better and better every single game. Uh, Jalen Brunson is looking fine. Um, I had to look up because yesterday, Quinn Grimes did not score. And I was like, am I, am I thinking about Quinn? Is he struggling this year? He's only averaging eight points, but his shooting splits are still pretty solid. They don't generate shots for him. Um, I, I mostly, when I think about the Knicks at this current moment, is, is get well soon, RJ with the migraines. I know he played last night, but like, how often are we going to see him maybe miss games? Because migraines is not something you just treat right now. No, like yeah, you know, because my mom has used to have migraines heavy. We also need him, RJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah for that's, sure. That's, he was that's, having a very good season for y'all. Yeah, it's noticeable when he's not out there for me at least. So I'm just I want to highlight Mitchell Robinson because I don't know because of how many great defensive centers there are in basketball, if he'll get the nod for like an all-defensive team or something. But he's playing all-defensive caliber defense while also simultaneously generating a lot more looks for his team just by being an offensive rebounding machine. So, mm-hmm. And those are morale killers, bro. Like when the team gets an offense, especially in a close game or like they're on a run and the team gets an offensive rebound and they kick it out for a big three, those, those are morale killers for real. Those can change games. Dante DiVincenzo quickly, Hart. Last time I checked, they were top 10 in O and D. Let's see if that still stays the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I have it up. But are, um, you, are you using the same metric I am? Glass. Oh, clean the glass is the way to be. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Knicks are. 10 in offense, 8 in defense. Oh, you beat me. Yep. You're oh. Always beating me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, give us. Sh- happy birthday to Jordan Pharmaceuticals, who decided he was going to message everybody today was his birthday. You if know you what? messaging anybody else up here, don't message me, Jordan Pharmaceutical. We're not doing that. You had Derek up here like, man, I got to get somebody his birthday. Shut up. That's a really good name, by the way. You know what? His last name, Pharmaceuticals, right? <laughs> Why y'all just pause like that? I'm legit asking y'all. What are you asking? Why his last? A pharmaceutical? Is he selling weed? Selling pills? No, no, no. supposed to let him answer if that was a pharmaceutical. A pharma, it's because it's his family works with a pharmacy. Uh, duh. But I'm just saying, some people have that that thought that it's like he's he's doing bad shit. Oh, I see what you mean. Also, somebody is he selling weed? No. I also just like because Jordan Farmar was an NBA player. It was just Farmar's pharmaceuticals. Oh, you uh follow B- him. big ears. You follow him. I do. Yeah. Why you follow him? But Why pharmaceuticals. Not? I follow a lot of people. I'm about to start them following. Why them. you ain't tell them happy fucking birthday? You too. <clears throat> you going? What you just say? You going Hollywood? You about starting following people? 
Yeah, people from high school. Oh, that's the people. What did his message? <laughs> that's you? fine. Read me his message that he sent to you. Let's see if he copied and pasted. Let's Ooh. see. Let's see if he copied. Read Jordan, they on your ass, Jordan. It was D. Millie, capital S, exclamation mark. Um, not capital, but exclamation mark. My birthday is today, G. Turning 24, Kobe year. If you see this, fuck with me. I'd appreciate it so much. Okay, he didn't. He said, birthday, uh, sub, birthday shout out. I know you just said you couldn't keep up with my birthday. is Tuesday, long time supporter. Basically, day one in my community. Game so hard to try. We'll try again right before y'all record. Appreciate it either way, P. Birthday today, P24, like I'm br- trying to bring Kobe back. Happy birthday, Jordan Pharmaceutical. Hope you made it this far into the episode. That'll let us know if you was really. Hold on. Please look at his first tweet. You don't got to read it out loud, but it's a crazy tweet. It. Oh, man. That's what is happening. He better, Jordan. What does it say? No, 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 it's no, not. Anyway, who, who, what's the next team? I said next. We, I think we got like oh. seven teams left, so let's let's get through these. Okay. The Grizzlies. Um, they're missing John Stephen Adams. Jump shot heavy team. Force a lot of turnovers, but no pressure on the rim. Don't get to the free throw line. Can't remember uh, good enough to close. I don't know what the fuck I was trying to write there. Can't win at home. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're not good. They're missing John Moran, obviously. But outside, like, you know you're missing shit, but, like, they really missing them. They, they really missing them. And now you got Marcus Smart out. Um, they can't close out possessions. They don't have anybody to rebound. So, yeah, uh, Jaron Jackson can defend. Marcus Smart can defend. But it don't matter if you can't end the possession because Jaron yeah. Jackson is not a center. And I think that that is prominent without Steven Adams. The rebounding is just not there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a tough team to watch. I mean, it's just they're missing so much. And it's just like they don't have it all there together. And, you know, I thought they were going to be able to pull some t- uh, games together, you know, prior to the season starting and, like, keep them afloat just a little bit. It don't got to be 500, but to have the wins that they do have, it's like, damn, y'all miss y'all. That, y'all missing a lot. Yeah, you know? Desmond Bain is, like, playing really good. And, like, he's trying his best, but, like, his best just still isn't enough. <laughs> like, he's one of the top scorers in the fourth quarter, too. Mm-hmm. And, like, he still, <clears throat> they just don't have enough still. Which is very unfortunate because he's just having such an amazing season. If he could duplicate this next to Ja, this team is going to be very good. Um, my next team was the Nuggets. Uh, my 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 only statement with them was that it's no Jamal Murray, no prom. Uh, next man up mentality. They lost Jamal Murray, but there hasn't seemed to be any setback with the team. They still rolling. Reggie Jackson has shown throughout his career of the starting PG go down. I can step in and give you quality starting moments at that PG spot. He's been doing it all season for them with Jamal being out. And uh, Christian Brown is also uh, Christian Brown has also had a very good season uh, for them. Jalen Pickett moves like Andre Miller. <laughs> Just want to add that in there. Big booty. Back you down from the guard position. Just next time you watch the Nuggets and Jalen Pickett is out there, just watch how he's maneuvering. All right. Because I love me some Andre Miller. Why? Because you build like him? <laughs> I, I always do got love for the players that are not like crazy athletic because they yeah. still get it done because that's always kind of been me. Yeah. Not always getting it done on the court, but just not that athletic. Right. What's your next thing? Uh, let me look back. I wouldn't. Prepare. You only at work. I didn't talk about the Pacers. Pacers. I probably should have started off with them. They're probably the Pacers are the team to watch. They get, they're really fun. They sh- they t- uh, shoot a ton of threes. They run the floor in transition, and they have like an offensive engine with Tyrese Halliburton, who. I'm going to keep saying this for, like, them saying that, like, we don't know if he's going to be able to get past people or, like, all that type of stuff. He's one of the funnest guards to watch, and he's hard to stay in front of in that open space with all that, with all the the room and everything like that. And he's going to be a guy that gets a lot of people paid, too. You know, Miles Turner looks amazing next to him. You know, like, like the game against the Bucks that they won, he had Miles Turner. He had open looks for Miles Turner at the three, and he's also catching him at the roll. He's finding all the shooters. Like, he's the real deal when it comes to, like, that offensive side. Yeah, only time they offense really looked bad was against the Magic recently. The Magic, yeah, that the was Magic, a weird. Like, game. They don't defend shit, but yeah. they gonna they gonna put up they gonna put up close Magic to hundred twenty five the po- uh, points. They, all, they defense like it was just nothing, bro. It was like thirty points in after quarter and a half. Like, ooh, things yeah. are rough over here. Jamal Mosley was waiting on that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my next team is the Miami Heat. Got to watch them pretty good over the last couple of games since they hit the back to back here in Chicago. Um, the most intri- intriguing thing about it all is that Ducky Robinson's a new player. Yeah, like Pick he's him up in fantasy, going crazy. He's putting the ball on the floor. He's averaging more two point attempts than he's ever attempted in his career. Getting to the basket, also still a, a, an immense amount of 
uh, pressure for the defense as a three-point shooter. So he's adding all of that. Bam Adebayo is looking like one of the top, the third best center in all of basketball behind the two guys up top. And they're able to still pull out a bunch of games. I know they lost the one to the Bulls. They were up 22-1. to one. But for the most part, they've been playing really good basketball over the last couple of weeks. We've seen Jimmy Butler play better, play care more. Because the first two weeks, he was averaging like 15 points per, not a lot of shot attempts, whatever. He's got a couple 30-plus point games under his belt now. Um, and they just fi- they've just they been able to find a way with what we usually deem to be not a lot. Jaime Jaquez as a rookie has looked amazing so far. Um, All-rookie first-team type caliber player right now. Um, I think there was a statistic before his last game against Chicago where you at, when you look at the, the opposing player that he's guarding, Field goal percentage, he was topping the league and preventing shots from going in or something along those lines. And I don't think that's probably going to be the case all season long. <laughs> but you like you're seeing the production immediately for Jaime. And yeah. the Miami Heat are, again, I don't put them in the upper echelon as far as like the top, top contenders. But again, you know the Heat are going to make some noise. They definitely surprised me. Um, when you looked at their roster on paper, they didn't look like a team that would be 8-4. and four. Um, They looked like a team that would be like hovering around 500 in that playing spot. But they've came out and they've shown that they are above that and they're like a 4-5 seed potentially. So if they keep playing like this and they still don't have Tyler Hero. One um, for one, you trading Tyler Hero for Zach Levine? Yeah. I mean, for whose sake? Are you saying just – For either, I guess. For the Miami Heat, yes. Mm. I don't know if the Bulls would care to do that. I don't know. Because I so I immediately thought when, when that idea was floated around, I always said, nah, the Heat would want to keep him. First of all, I don't think they would want Zach Levine if they're keeping him because mm-hmm. they're just like similar yeah. players. Um, but I was listening to, I forget what show, and it was a Heat fan specifically that was like, I think we he would do that because even though the gap between Zach and Tyler Hero is not immense, Zach is more ready at this moment for like Jimmy Butler's timeline, oh, which was just an interesting yeah. take. Obviously, the contracts are different and I stuff. I would say... If that point, because like you said the, <laughs> the gaps aren't too like big, I like the playmaking that Tyler Hero has been providing as well. Yep. And I just know Zach can't really emulate that. The mm-hmm. scoring is fine, but it's just like sometimes, especially if Kyle Lowry's not on his shit, they need that guy that's going to be spreading the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Next team. Uh, the Utah Jazz. Um, best rebounding team in the league. Best offensive rebounding team in the league. Uh, no surprise because they have so much size up front. Top 10 in blocks and assists. But they just can't manage to get consistent stops. They give up 122 points per game. Um, op- opponents score a lot and efficient against them. That That's two deadly things. Walker Kessler is kind of having the same season as last season. You know, it was a lot of projection and going forward and taking steps, which is what I always try to tell NBA fans around the league. is like we can project, but that's not always – this ain't 2K. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't going to be a given that you're going to see that progression um, that very next year. Um, got to be patient with Keontae George because it ain't there, but you can see some of the signs um, that are that is very encouraging because this team is going to need some guard play and some consistent guard play. And I got a question for y'all: Is Laurie Markkinen fully untouchable? No, I don't think he can be. It's it's, it's five players in the association that should be considered fully untouchable. He's yeah. not one of them. Last year of his contract, he might too. not be untouchable. He damn show like it's got to be the right pick because it's just like that is my solid corner piece so far, and he's been consistent with it. Like we've seen the one year, he's replicating the same thing. Yeah, I would say he's untouchable, but he's damn near like he's he's the franchise guy right now. Mm-hmm. He has two years, KB. Really, this year and next year is the last. Okay, is it an option on that last year? No. Interesting. I could have swore it was this year. Okay. Well, either way, that makes it easier to say no. Y'all think he his free agency, or are they going to get this extension done? Can't even tell you. Danny Ainge is such a confusing guy. Don't they have so That's much money, cards. though? Huh? Don't they have a lot of money, though? Uh, well, I, they just I, take that John Collins. Uh, it wouldn't matter, matter in his state because he's going to get paid regardless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, the top, the most expensive players are John Collins, who makes 25 this year, 26 next year. And he has a player option for his last year in 2025 for 26 and a half. He'll pick that up. Um, Jordan Clarkson has a player option this year, 23 million. If he accepts that, the next two years are going to be 14 and 14. So, you know, they got a little bit of, of, of money tied up, but they don't have anything crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody, the highest is 25 million. That makes sense. Colin Some Saxon people are paying 17. double that for their top guy. 
Laurie Marketing makes 17. Olenek is on the last year of his deal, making 12. THT has a player option for 11. He'll take that. So, uh, Next thing we got is the Boston Celtics. Um, Porzingis is just bringing them something that is like a relief. Um, like they had a game the other day where Tatum and Brown struggled. Porzingis dropped almost 30, and they still won, and they were able to pull out the game. Last year, if Tatum and Brown were ever to have an off night, there was no way they were going to be pulling out that game. So Porzingis is now giving them that extra third option punch where they could consistently rely on him to bring them something. Um, Because last year, you don't really know who the third guy was. Now it seems like it's a lock. And Drew Holiday's been pretty steady for them as well. Um, So this trade, the trades that they have done, seems like they were all very good trades and they all got the right pieces. Yeah, they're a complete team, man. Sam Howell's just coming off the bench in threes. Mm -hmm. Um, This team is fun. They're deep, and uh, they got a lot going on. Can't tell a Celtic fan shit about Sam Hauser, man. <laughs> they love that guy. He got that. That as soon as I touch this ball, it's probably gonna be up in the air because I really not gonna do much else on the damn floor. Yeah, but I'm yeah, they're fine. I, I yeah, you're right. The the like different dynamic that Kristaps give him, it's gonna go. I, it's gonna be. I feel like most beneficial in the playoffs. It can really go either way. You know, I feel like it depends how like what the matchup is because. With them going against like a Joel and B, I feel like Joel can Joel and B can kind of expose a Chris. For sure, he can you know expose saying? a lot uh, compared to what they had last year, where like more of a I guess Al Horford, Robert Wims that had them more uh, of like well, the, Horford, the last time they yeah, played yeah, Al, Al Horford, Horford did his thing, him, and he did a pretty solid job. Yes, he, he did, did. Really and good. they were um, doubling him randomly. They they definitely sent doubles, and a lot of them was coming from Porzingis. So like he yeah. had two seven footers guarding him, mm, but it just gives it that like you said that relief of pressure because it's like. They take the way Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are built. They're taking a lot of tough shots, and for you to have a different guy that can take advantage of mismatches or they can play off of, it just opens up the game a little bit more. And they're, they're spaced out. Yeah, you know they're spaced out. They're not having a, the paint, you know, packed up and everything like that. Andrew Holiday is more of a threat to score than Marcus Smart, um, and he's still got a decision it. maker. I mean, yeah, I guess I, I don't really know. How to, they seem to both be similar modes of playmaking, but like mm-hmm. Drew Holiday is more of a threat to score, I would say. I think Drew Holiday is a better playmaker than Marcus Smart. Yeah, just probably because he's, yeah, he, uh, he definitely attracts more attention. And I guess when you do that, it just opens up so much more. That was my last. No, nah, I got one more, Mike. Uh, my last it's a cycle. Team, my last team is the Dallas Mavericks. And I feel like they, they're starting, they have a really good start. But I don't feel like they're too different from what we thought they were going to be. They're probably they're like going to be backpacked by Luka and Ky- Kyrie offensive side. They're going to be dangerous on there. They're going to take a lot of threes. Defense is kind of non-existent. But you got to kind of like the pickups that they had with Grant Williams, Derek Lively. I've seen Mavs fan praising Derek Lively for the impact that he's had. And he's only a rookie too. Rookie big man at that because especially when you're like the only guy down there, you can find yourself in foul trouble a lot. I hate tooting my own horn. I'm a draft guru. What she was gonna say? That I gave him a plus the moment. I, I really like. He's been everything that they needed from the lob, from defense, from like they needed that type of size. So yo, Lakers should hit me up. We could. I'm gonna talk to Rob. Bet. You know we might see him again. In Vegas. He just got a whole D meals now hitting that stinky leg next to him. <laughs> 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 Is uh, it was it him or did them seeds get smaller? <laughs> That was the wildest shit I think I've ever heard you say. Yeah. <laughs> we went to the same area we was at 24 hours ago. He said, is it me or did these seats get smaller? <laughs> they pressed the button. <laughs> seats smaller. <laughs> they definitely felt more tight. But, yeah, I, if if Luca goes down, it's going to be a problem. Oh, they, we're not even thinking about that. It's a problem for them. Carriers look good over the last four years. Yes, he he's four, been a little bit more aggressive. What team can't you – but there's teams that are su- down, the there's teams that are, are subs- that can sustain a, a level of success oh, okay. even with their play out. That's one of the teams oh, that's probably like I nah. See I see what you mean. My last team is going to be the Philadelphia 76ers. What did we learn through the first month? Tyrese Max is an all star and he makes everything okay. And I also learned that you should not even th- like entertain, entertain the fact that Zach Levine is on the trade market. Because he is redundant in your offense. He's redundant on your team. And you don't want to pay future assets and pay Zach Levine for the next three years for a guy that's redundant. Continue to let Tyrese Maxey grow as a player. That's their third option, though. Uh, uh. I think they're better off with Tobias Harris right now. 
I just accidentally called. The arc that you've had with Tobias Harris is so great. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, the, the 76ers are doing um, really cool stuff. I also learned that it comes a very long way to have an adequate coach. It does. You yeah, know, Nick Nurse has been, <clears throat> I don't know, he, he he has some boys playing at another level. I like the, the actions where it's like, um, it'll be like Joel Embiid starting off with the ball or whatever, and they'll have Tyrese Maxey like come off a down screen or whatever, and it's, it's it's going into a dribble handoff with Embiid. So it's not just a regular degular like throw Joel Embiid the ball, have ten sets of eyes looking at him. It's like you got to pay attention to Tyrese Maxey as he's coming off because he's shooting forty percent, you know. And it's like now we're working into our our better po- uh, play with the pick and roll. It's a lot more action you got to guard, which is like it's gonna be so much helpful when they, they go against the playoff teams. It's like everybody but Joel Embiid. Yeah, everybody but him. We gonna double him. We gonna trap him. And Joel Embiid just gonna have to make the right play. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a lot better than that. Yeah, I'm excited for them uh, when they come playoff time and it's off season. They have money. Uh, they could be a dangerous team when it comes um, free agency wise. I wonder how much of that they'll use at the trade deadline. Not trying to go get a star. I, like move some of those movable contracts to go like increase your bench or just get more yeah. b- better role players or what whatever. Yeah, because I definitely don't want them to get going too much go into get that money. Jeremy Grant and Malcolm Brock. If Jeremy you, can't return. If you can get both. That's fine. But also, I think you should just Ouch. just wait a little bit because you don't know what's what's on the market with Paul George and Kawhi. Like they're both out there, and I feel like you've got to be patient and wait and see if you can get one of them. Because <laughs> 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 if you can get one of them, now your team just looks drastically different. And you just skyrocket in. Maybe Tobias. I know he on his last year of his deal. Maybe he'd look at this and be like. Maybe I'll come. No, not leave, but uh, like, maybe he'll come on a lesser deal just for the opportunity. He about his bad. You, you think so? He just got forty oh, in. He just got like forty in. Oh, yeah, I yeah, I was thinking maybe he would take a lesser deal to compete for a championship at a high level. And then they can make a super team because then you could get Paul George. Clay Thompson ain't on shit. Maybe he take a vet minimum because he just <laughs> he just want to be around. <laughs> she. <winning. Yeah. laughs> he just want to be around winning again, so you can get him on a low, and then Tobias Harris. Where are you gonna take his his both to? The city of Brotherly love. The fuck? Philly on, on the water. Is it? Yeah, it's right on the coast. It's, yeah, it's hey, near the water. A, hey, don't ever question Derek with geographical stuff. You're right. My last team, the Atlanta Hawks, baby. Uh, what can That's I say? That's on me, baby. Struggling to get wins at home. Only real offensive flaws, how much they turn the ball over. Uh, third in steals, which I like, but they can't really get stops. Um, you know what I'm saying? They get steals with DeJounte and Trey Murphy. I mean, uh, from Trey Young and some steals, but they don't really get the stops that they need. Um, is it time to trade DeAndre Hunter? Nope. I think they made more. I he think they made for at least one good ass playoff game. I think, right when they about to get swept. <laughs> yeah, you got think 30. they are. I think they need to get a more consistent, reliable third guy. You think? Honestly, I wouldn't be upset with DeAndre Hunter on the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, I think they need Jeremy Grant because I think honestly, I think DeAndre Hunter might thrive more so on the Blazers. Might be able to fit more comfortable. But if I bring in Jeremy Grant, does that affect Jalen Johnson? Yes. Yeah, naturally. But maybe they can make that work. Play Jalen Johnson at the four, Jalen, uh, Jeremy Grant at the three. Try it out. See how it works. Yeah, you got Clint for the rebounds. Yeah. Jeremy Grant probably not going to grab too many of those. Hell no. Nah, I don't know why. <laughs> under under <laughs> the so, finish with two he's rebounds. so athletic that he could easily get six to seven a night. Derek? Uh, last team we got is the Cleveland Cavaliers. My, Best for last. It's um, not the last team. It's our last team. We got two more teams after this that we collect. Because it's 30 teams. You can't split that oh, by four. Oh, shit. Either. You're right. Um, <laughs> they they Best just have, for last. They have yet to give us consistent stretch of basketball because of health. That's really all. Um, we have we really haven't seen their full team, uh, whether it's Jared Allen. Shout whether it's Max Struess. Donovan Mitchell, whether it's Garland. So, someone has consistently been out of the lineup. Um and that's really all. They they just need to get healthy. Yeah, no, they haven't had um they're starting the lineup g- for the most of the, the season. I remember the game where Armani Bates was like he was forced into the world where he had to create for them because they had nobody else. That was against the, the first game against the Knicks. Yeah. I'm like, and that was when I found out who Craig Porter was. <laughs> but Craig Porter said a twenty point game the other yeah, night. Did. Like he's he's playing good basketball. He don't look like a two way player to me. He looks like a real NBA player, which is dope. I hope he gets his contract converted sometime soon. Because he's been he's been pretty solid. Considering the circumstances, yeah, the other day was the first time I really like seen him. He was like playing good. I was like, "Damn, it was Craig Porter?" <laughs> Damn, <laughs> another Porter Junior in the NBA. Yeah, is that crazy? How many is and that? He's on the Cavs. It's Michael Porter Junior. 
Otto Porter Jr. Kevin Porter. Jr. Kevin Porter Jr. Craig Porter Jr. And Por- Papa Porter just out here. Devin Porter Jr. too. <laughs> He's just doing his thing. Devin Porter Jr. played last year for the Nuggets. Went to Wisconsin. Uh, so we got a, f- a few more teams that we have not talked about. So we're going to do it collectively. Devin, is Devin Porter Jr. on your team this year? He might have signed a two-way deal with the Blazers. Let's see. The Phoenix Suns are a team that we haven't collectively talk- we haven't talked about at all. What have we learned about the Phoenix Suns so far? Damn, that's crazy. Nobody picked them. Who? I mean, <laughs> the Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. It's been a little hard to like fully gauge them I just because people Devin have been out, out the lineups. But Kevin yeah, his name didn't even pop. Up. I'll put Devin. I'll put P and it just said no search. <laughs> uh, it's been hard kind of gauge them because they have players in and out the lineup. But Kevin Durant, along with that, like LeBron James, still at the age he is, is playing magnificent ball. Yeah. Devin Booker, when he does plays, he looks really good. And then Bradley Bill has had he's had some stretches still getting his legs underneath them. Um, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's really hard to gauge this team. This team, I, for me, what I've learned over the month is Bradley Beal is concerning me. That injury is not like a I was, whatever I yeah. thought of it prior. I didn't take it into full consideration. It's serious, it seems. You know what's um, funny? I was thinking about that injury the other day, and it was like that clip of him shooting the basketball came out like a week and a half before warming he was, up. Yeah, when yeah. he was about to come back. And it didn't look like he was fully healthy. Mm-mm. And then, like a week or so later, they were talking about he's about to play, and we're like, "How does how is he about to play?" He was just shooting around. He didn't look mm-hmm. he didn't look good. And then they come back, and then they're talking about now he's out three weeks because of his back. I mean, it didn't look like his back was healthy when when y'all mm-hmm. had him shooting around. I, I the only the only problem I have with this team is there is no wiggle room. No. If really. they figure out, man, we really good right here, but we could really use this, that, they don't really have no. Yeah. They have no tradable assets. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I'm I'm so, I'm like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm surprised by how Kevin Durant is playing. He's playing out of his mind. Um, and like you were saying, you know, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, we haven't really seen much, so I get you. It's hard bro, to really put it all Eric the Gordon, no matter where he goes, he going to shoot that thing, bro. Oh, for sure. Yusuf Nurkic, he, he – Not the prettiest, but it fit. Yeah, you know, I like yeah. – he does operate from, like, a lot of, like, that elbow to, like, high three, and it just leaves a lot of room for back doors. And he's pretty good at making those passes and kind of, like, you know, just playing within the offense. No, he did that a lot with the Blazers, too. Mm-hmm. He, you could definitely see, like, he has the vision to make the right passes. But this team, they're going to be very good once they get Bradley Beal back because right now, KD and Bradley – Kevin. Katie and Devin Booker together has really put on a show for them. The last team. Did we talk about the Golden State Warriors? Did somebody no. have them? All right, so it's the 30th team. The Golden State Warriors. What have we learned about the Warriors so far? Steph Curry is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if we'd have to learn that. Like, yeah. Lay Thompson just had his first 20-point game of the season. Yes. In the game before that, he started off pretty hot, too. Slowed yeah. down. I think Did he scored 12 straight he, points he in the game. He 14 like. points. Did you hear? Uh, uh, ended with 16. Yeah. Chris Paul called, like, the little meeting where he's like, they had he called for like an extra practice to get their offense right, and like I think after that they went on their two, like their their streak or they won wow. their, or they won their first game. What after a that. guy! And Chris uh, Steph Curry's like, yeah, man. Whenever you're on a six game losing streak, you just kind of got to like go back and check the roots or whatever. And Chris Paul was like the the leader for that, so that was kind of cool to see. He's so great, huh? He had a good game. Do, could do, could y'all see Chris Paul retiring a Warrior? No. Yeah. No. This is the last year? This is a, like a one-off? I don't know if he's finishing the season as a Warrior. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't they need, know. They need to make moves, man. But he's been good. Yesterday, yeah, he's, he's really good look, for them. Yeah, he looks really good for them. Oh, uh, yeah. Whether he's starting or he's coming off the bench, he's looked good. It's what almost they, like he's one of the greatest of all time. What if they trade him for Russ? <laughs> That'd be so crazy. <laughs> and literally impossible. That boy Russ is making $3 million. Oh, this year. I forgot. <laughs> CP3 is making still 30. Yeah, Shit. He makes big up. money, big money, big money. Get off that as soon as you can. He'll, he'll sign another 30 year next year. Don't worry. What team would give Chris Paul $30 million? The Beachams. <laughs> the Beachams would have to have $30 million to give $30 million. You probably have to have more than $30 million. Nope, just 30 so you just give them all your money? Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's an investment in a 40-year-old point guard. You're saying that he's going to make you that money back? <sighs> yeah, I don't think You know me and Chris Paul got the same birthday. Oh, for real? Yeah. You, What's that? You May 6th. Huh? You say you and Chris Paul? Yeah, we got oh. the same birthday. So you yeah. so you always be... Y'all the fourths. I'm the fifth, sixth. All oh, right, all right. 
I share a birthday with Derrick Rose. Oh, wow. Look at you. Y'all I, play just alike, too. I share, Thank you. I share a birthday with Paul Konerko. Y'all definitely do better. Like, I like that. <laughs> Who you share a birthday with? It's a, I'm I looking at. Know. I, I, I know. know. You're the third. Yeah. You're the fourth. I'm looking I'm at it right now. Ryan Ryan Rollins. He's born July 3rd. Hey. Mm-hmm. Jabari Bird. Uh, hold up. What team David you play for? Burns. What team Ryan Rollins play for? Am I thinking of the wrong dude? Ryan Rollins, isn't he the dude that played for the Clippers? Nope. That's Ryan Hollins. Oh, my God. <laughs> July 3rd, right? Yep. Oh, Max. Dude, you got some good names here, buddy. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. You so share, what we see play it in? You share a birthday with. You share I a birthday with know. Georges Papianis. <laughs> Wait, no. Tom Cruise like one of the biggest he movie stars biggest, ever. I, I don't know any movies. He's not been. one. You don't know not one? one? No. Not one. Not off the top of my head, no. That is cr- not a series? Yeah, that's crazy. He, he ain't never seen M.I.P. Oh, oh, M.I. That's funny you say that. I was into a podcast and they were trying to figure out if Mission Impossible is shortened to M.I.P. or is it just M.I.P. I. I feel like it would be I've M.I.P. Seen to make MIP more sense. I've seen M.I.P. on something before with Mission Impossible. Yeah, long words sometimes have two letter right. M.I.P. You also share a birthday with Patrick Wilson. Do you know Patrick Wilson? I know Mrs. Wilson. He don't know Charlie Wilson. Oh, Patrick Wilson. Insidious movies. Oh yeah, I do know who Patrick Wilson is. Yep, um, Montrell Williams, Montel Mont- Mont- Montel Williams. Okay. You know who that is? The actor. Yeah. Where did he act? In? I was gonna say that's a very that would be a very loose. Him. Where do you know him? I've from? seen him, but I can tell. What you does what, he look like in your brain? He's a dark skin. I don't know how to explain <laughs> that. Jesus. How Montel <laughs> definitely sounds like a dark skin. Yeah, it's a brother. You know, it's a brother by is Montel. He dark skin, like he's darker than Mike. Is he? He's like darkening all of us. Oh no, nah, you got him mixed up with somebody else. You also Montel. share a birthday with Robert Downey Jr. Montel Williams used to have a show. Montel. Oh, the one that used to come on TV. Yeah, yeah. Ballhead. Yeah, ball <laughs> the head. show ball that head. used to come on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I Robert know Downey, Montel. Robert Downey yeah. Jr. Do you know him? No. Robert Downey Jr. Oh, Mr. Downey. No, that's Walter Downey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Robert Downing is. Bro, what? what? Where do you be at? Yes, you do. If you yes, that. you do, bro. Take yes, you do. And think. What is he being in? You tell me. I I don't know. He's fucking Iron Man, Derek. Oh, that's 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 Mr. Name? Stark. Robert Downey Jr. I didn't know that was his name. God, that's so. I just knew him as Iron Man. Who is who is Irvin? Irvin? Who is Irvin? Who is Irvin? Irvin what? <laughs> Irvin is a very broad name. Hey, this is really who is, like who is Irvin? No, we. How is your pop culture that bad? Who is Irvin Johnson? That you don't know Tom Cruise or Robert Downey Jr. Who is Irvin Johnson? I don't know. You do know. You do know. Well, think the about old, the last name Johnson. So, <laughs> but you know what's funny? We've gone through this on this show before. <laughs> he said, "Is that the Hulk?" <laughs> <laughs> You do know who that is, though. I'm going to let you know right now. Bro, you've gone that. through this exact thing <laughs> on this that. podcast. <laughs> well, you remember Johnson. when our set was this way? Over yeah. there? You, we did this before. Irvin Johnson. I don't remember who Irvin Johnson is. <laughs> <laughs> is he an actor? <laughs> I'm uh, sure he has. Oh, yeah, I'm before. sure he's probably, probably been in the movie or like a show. It made some type of appearance. What's Dr. J's real name? Oh, Julius Irvin? Is that what you was talking about? Who yeah. is Irvin Johnson? Oh, Magic Johnson. Oh, <laughs> my God. Go. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, man. <laughs> you know who Richard Pryor is? Richard Pryor is a singer. <laughs> <laughs> but you hear the confidence in him, though? <laughs> Richard, first of all, don't disrespect Richard Oh, no, no, no. Pryor. He's a comedian. Richard Pryor is a stand-up comedian. Never mind. But hey. who are you thinking of to think know. singer? I, You know... After you know do- Terrell Pryor? After doing no. this so much with Derek, I really do think his problem is he rushes. Yes, he don't think he don't take he a second rushes. to think about it. Because you just caught it very fast. Because yeah, Richard Pryor is not a fucking singer. Okay. I'm gonna Google most famous people in the world. And I'm gonna see if you know the most famous people in the world. This is good podcasting right here. 
Okay. That NBA okay. stuff we did. Who, who cares about that? <laughs> All right. Do you know who Michelle Obama is? Yes. Obama's wife. His wife? What? You joking, right? Michelle Obama? She's what? What do you mean? It ain't no way you thought they was married this whole time. Michelle Obama and Barack Obama? Yeah. They are married. He's trolling. I'm trolling. But also, <laughs> she's, she's more than she's just more his wife. Yeah, she's more than just his wife. <laughs> well, I know. She's done a lot. <clears throat> do you know, Bar- you know Barack, obviously. Okay. Do you know Bill Gates? Yeah, the one who created Microsoft. Do you know Jim Carrey? Hey, give him credit. No, yeah, no, he's yeah. still. I, I was surprised when he said create a Microsoft. Supposed yeah. to just say hey, most people just say the rich, the rich mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I get. Hey, come on, hey, you gotta get Jim the clown. You so we gonna give you credit, Jim That's, Carrey. Uh, I know the name. I don't really know what he does though. The, you don't. You don't know. The you name. don't know him then. Yeah, he's he's a guy that when you hear this name, especially us when we were born in our mm-hmm. era, this dude means the world to me. If I, if I ever met him, I would hug him. I love Jim Carrey. I love Jim Carrey. He's big mouth. He got a big ass mouth. Love him. Yeah, he know. was probably what's that movie? It's called uh, Gone with Dick and Jane. You know that movie? I don't know. That. Oh, you know the mask? You know the mask? Oh wait, the green. Yes, yeah, I don't That's think I ever watched it. Liar, liar. I don't think I watched Liar, liar. Oh, do you know Morgan Freeman? Yeah, the black actor. Do you know Johnny Depp? He's a white actor. <laughs> What movie? I don't know. <laughs> it's like a prominent ass oh like God. movie series. He's been like he's done every movie, no. and they have like I can probably like no. Six. You know this because I, your significant other loves not this series specifically, but your significant other loves Disney. Yes. Yeah. This is a Disney property. It was a ride that they turned into a movie. Cars. No. Oh. He actually, but I did. Act- I watched Cars recently again, and I would no, like to say, he actually acted. It stands as, up. He huh? acted it as holds a up. human. Oh, I, I, what's the name? Might be Act- a little racist. <laughs> okay. Feeling like you know, I don't know. Lightning McQueen might be that. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, I've never really watched Pirates of the Caribbean. Me either, but but I know. I know. Yeah. I've never seen one of them. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Okay. I know what he name two like. movies he's been in. I don't know two movies. Oh. Not even give us a movie or something more than I know. The movie. I know he's Hispanic and he has like. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh no, he, he's Italian actually. He might be. He, he might be. He might be. So... Yeah, it'd be so funny how stuff just rolls <laughs> off your tongue and it should be so wrong, bro. There's this. Mo- he's not Italian. Yeah. Oh, he might have played a lot of Italian roles though. His name sounds very. Ita- I mean, maybe in his depths, his grandfather's from it. He's an American man. The Hispanic was wild. There's this movie that's iconic about this thing that is real, and people fascinate over it, and it has to do with water. It has to do with water. I mean, yeah. Oh, the Titanic? Yes. Oh. Romeo and Juliet, a lot of different stuff. Wolf of Wall Street is my Wolf favorite. Wolf of Wall Street. Street. Do you know Taylor Swift? Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can is good as hell if you ain't seen that. Do you know Beyonce? Yes. Will Smith. Who was Beyonce's sister? I don't know. He's not going to know. Solange? And I, when we were kids, Miley, I don't know Miley Cyrus. Hannah Montana. Okay. No, Jack, I, Jackie Chan. I, I need three Will Smith movies. I need three. Come I on, am now. Legend. I need three. Bad Boys 1. Bad Boys 2. <laughs> I knew he was going to pull it out. <laughs> I need that third. I said Bad Boys 2. I need the third. Come on, <laughs> Uh... You also got Pursuit of Happiness. Come on. Easy. Um, uh, Jackie it's, Chan. Jackie Chan, yeah. Would you just call me? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get harder, but you say yes to Jackie Chan. Yes. Okay. I'm not even going to question. I'm assuming you know him from. Yes. Um, fucking the one with Chris Tucker. Okay, great. Um, Rush Hour, yes. Rush Hour. Um, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan is a singer. I don't really know anything about Actress. her. Actress. Grow up on her. Lizzie uh-huh. McGuire. Oh, Wait, she was in Lindsay. I'm sorry, Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, that's Lindsay it. Lohan. That's it. Wait, no, no, Lindsay Lohan is not. Uh, but it's not. It's not what I said though. I said Lizzie McGuire. That's uh That's uh That's not. That's not. Lindsay. That's like tuning in back to when I was like 12, 13 staying up for uh, Disney Channel. Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff. Um, yeah, yeah. I, Hillary I Duff. I was, cool. I, that one, right? But yeah, yeah. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. I know what she looks like. What she look like? She's a black woman. 
Um, but she has something distinct about her besides being black. I don't remember. What's her hairstyle? Actually, I don't know. Okay, so you don't know Whoopi Goldberg. Michael J. Fox. No. Okay. I figured. Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. I've seen her. I know she's fine. Chuck Taylor, Norris. But like, I don't okay. know. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know right now. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris. Chuck Norris. You first of all, you got to... You got to answer this right. He has been in a lot of. Commercials. You got to answer this right, or he will. He has. I'm, I'm, a, I'm going through it. You ain't got to spend a bunch of time. If you know, you know. If you do, he has been in a lot of commercials. What color? What color is his hair? That's what college he went He's to. He's not a blonde. He's, He's not blonde, blonde hair. I don't remember college he went to. Um, Robin <laughs> Robin Williams. Who? Robin Williams. Not the NBA player. Well, he's at Robert. He's at Robin. Not Robin. Robin. Yep. I don't know who that is. I Christina was Aguilera. NBA player? You said what? Christina Aguilera. Yes. I know the name. I I can't picture the face. You right. know you know a rap what lyric. That? What's the occupation? Singer. Yes. He did just say rap lyric, but um, Michael Cage. No, that's an ex NBA player. I know you ain't gonna. Um, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, line. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you gave us a, a, <laughs> so that. That's how a lot of people know him, I guess. Oh shit! He also played the piano. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. He's a musician. <laughs> shit, blind. It's that blind motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that man. a lot of people question on if he's really blind. When we become, they talking about they be waving at him. He be waving back and shit. <laughs> when we become out of this world, like like red carpet, and we meet people. And they like, hey, hey, uh, come take this picture with Stevie Wonder. He loves you. Like, watch, uh, Derek is going to have funny remarks. Oh, that's that blind motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that blind dude. Okay, okay, okay. All right, here, here's a very quick times most influential people of 2023. You tell me how many of them you know. I'm going to be real, too. I probably not. Uh, yeah, every, everybody can, can be 2023, involved. I might not know some of these people. Michael B. Jordan. Yes. That. Of course. Drew Barrymore. Time out. I got a confession. I know who Michael B. Jordan is. You've never seen a movie? What? Uh, Harbaugh. This, this has nothing to do with me. Oh. Dana, talking about who is Michael Jordan. Wait, what? A couple years ago, when I was first into the relationship with Dana, she, Michael Jordan to her was Michael B. Jordan. Mm-hmm. It wasn't oh, the ball wow. head dude. Oh. We had somebody draft Michael B. Jordan not too long ago. And our NBA, remember we was drafting players, and somebody took Michael B. Jordan? This motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Wait what? We was don't you don't know, remember that? He was like, he, he was like, it was like, was it the greatest all time or some no, shit? He was we like, were drafting, um, it was doing all season. Fuck, we was and doing, he had the number one pick. Yeah, yeah. He was like Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> uh, I think I took the wrong MVP year, and I took and I said Michael B. Jordan. We were drafting like all time. Oh, MVPs. okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Sheesh. Uh, Drew Barrymore. Okay, no. yes. These are still my childhood. So I'm Aubrey Plaza. No. no, no, I know Abby Plaza. Um, Salma Hayek. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, I know that is. I don't know who that is. What does she do? A lot, everything. If you don't like titties, just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. Mm, nah, I don't know who the hell that is. She, she's Gamora. Oh, Odyssey she is. Galaxy. She's in the Avatar movie. She's the the, the woman. I Avatar. wish I was better with like, cause I. If you say the movie name or the movie character, I'll be like, oh, yeah. But I, I just don't be looking up who the actual player or person is a lot. Facts. Um, yeah, y'all don't even know these. I don't know the hell. These people are. What the hell? Are Steve you? Lacey? Yeah. He don't know nothing about no Steve Lacey. I don't know who Steve Lacey is. No. That's Leave that song alone. All right, that's enough of this. A lot of these, I don't know. Y'all know... Um, uh, do you, Doja Cat is the next name that popped up. I'm sure you know Doja Cat. You know Leonard the Plug? Leonard the Plug? No. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Do you know Neon? Neon. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> this, boy, this boy do not be on the internet at all, which is good. You know, we're we about to be in our 30s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, uh, do you know who Aiden Ross is? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you know who Do you know who Speed is? Yes. I show Speed. Okay. 
Interesting. The streamer. <laughs> I know you know who Duke Dennis is. That's your man. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he says he popping up on my fucking Snapchat. Yeah, he's like, always saying all the bro. Yeah. yeah. All the AMP dudes <sighs> just like pop up on my Snapchat like suggestion thing. I'd be like, why? <laughs> right. Do, big following. Do you know who? Um, you think about content creators? I'm just trying to think of random people. I always do. Think. You know, um, uh, Leland Mendigo. Yeah. Okay. RDC. Why would I know who? Uh oh. Now Uh-oh. You, just, you just know all the RDC members. Like we didn't no, have a video on this all. channel. Name I, them all. I, I, exactly. Them all. Name four. Exactly. Mark Leland. Um. I. <laughs> Okay. The way you pronounced it was just <laughs> awful. Mark. Ow. What? You said, twice. you said Mark twice. Said Mark. Mark. Yeah. Oh. The first Dylan. one. Yes, you did say it without Dylan. Mark. Dylan and um. Ben. Okay. He always forget John. Always, always forget John. John. <laughs> they be forgetting John. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely be forgetting John. <laughs> we used to go out with them. And we'd be by ourselves and. We see John by himself. Every <laughs> good friend group needs a John in they in their group. They really do. Um, do you know Beta Squad? No. What's Beta Squad? Another content group. Oh. Um I we, definitely don't know many content creator groups. Do you know TTW? Yeah. I don't. Clips? Yeah. You know who Naran is? Yes. <laughs> right, can we get you ain't getting disrespectful now. <laughs> you know who Smalls is? Barely. I remember he kept saying Smalls that Smalls a black man. Smalls he, a black and he found out he's white. He sat he had if you ever listen to Smalls talk, he has like a No, you be so confidently wrong. No, he does he sound black to no, you? Not doesn't. even a little bit. Oh. I, I used to play Fortnite with him and he kinda had a Maybe he's coming through the game audio wrong. You know who EJ is? Your brother? Bro, I had somebody <laughs> I was saying condolences to somebody who lost somebody in their life and a dude who Apply oh. to be check your DM. Oh yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I was like, that was bro, so crazy. What time and place, my guy? All right, we gotta get out of here. We appreciate y'all watching and listening to this episode of Through the Wire. Um, we talked about every single team, some longer than others. That's how it's gonna be. <laughs> you feel me? We'll be back uh, on Saturday with another episode. Bet. He said bet. Like, like he 